Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, before I begin our typical festivities for Chatting with Nuts, I wanted to take this time to remember someone that we have lost here in the book community. It's someone that um, I considered a friend, and it's someone who has been active in many different communities. Uh, mine, uh, Alex Nevaez's, Daniel Green's, Mike's, a bunch of different places. Uh, and that is Shake. Shake was, uh, he was a tremendous person. And uh, always uplifted any conversation that he was a part of. Probably the biggest of Song of Ice and Fire fan I, <laughs> I ever knew. And uh, yeah, uh, this community is a very tight-knit one. And whenever we lose someone, especially at such a tragically young age, uh, it, it tends to hit pretty hard. So uh, I just want to take this moment to say, Shake, we love you. We miss you. And uh, our condolences are with your family and uh, with everyone that... <clears throat> The new shake and uh, literally one of the most kind, gentle humans I've ever had the pleasure of talking to. And I hope that uh, I hope that uh, we can be more like shake because the world is a little bit dimmer without him. Um, so rest in peace, buddy. And uh, we'll miss you. So without any further ado, it is episode 40 of chatting with nuts. And I am joined as almost always. <laughs> how, many, how many have I been on these? 40? I mean, you're the semi-permanent co-host, and right. uh, it's always a good time to have you Indeed. Um, back on. So how how you doing, my friend? We're finishing up the month of October. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, this month's got to end. Like, it's freaking... <laughs> it's got to end. I'm so sick of... It's just... I am just... I'm just so sick of being told by students who who need to do something. Uh, oh, I can't. Like, oh, I can't. I can't do that. Oh, I've, oh, I've got, I've got to do this. Oh, college essays are due November one. I'm like, did you just find out now that they're due November one? Like, did you not know until this week they were due November one? Dunderheads. Um, it's. I just need like. I'm tired of us having club functions and like nine. I have a 72 member club. Nine people will show up, and freaking six of them are me and the officers. That's not a club. That's a town well 72 people i mean theoretically so these freaking children that might be that might be uh tax exempt at that i point. just i just need this i just need this stupid i just need it i just need it to be through november uh but then i mean i'll be all right but once we hit like thanksgiving break that month between thanksgiving and christmas it is like the kids just want to chew paint off the walls at that point they are they are in, they're like what you mean, what? Why are we here? We just had Thanksgiving. Aren't we out for Christmas yet? And it is just like pulling teeth. Uh. Yeah. yeah, and everyone's kind of on the edge uh, because it, it feels like the holidays. Like I, I, I was telling you before we went live, I spent this whole week on a work trip. And I love October. I enjoy uh, horror movies. I enjoy reading a couple horror books. Like it's my thing. And I feel like I just never got into the groove of it. And it's especially because of this week of Halloween, I've... Uh, I was away, you know, and I just feel like I'm getting ready for Thanksgiving now. I feel like I'm skipping it all. It kind of sucks. Well, Christina, it also corresponds with the fact that, you know, everyone like has to have an event, like include, like there's always an event. <laughs> like right now I'm freaking. So if you don't know what pep club is at the football games, they have pep club, which is read the rich kids. Um, it's generally the rich kids club and they have a theme that they dress up for and they go to, events they go to like sporting events and they and, 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 and i'm not dissing all of them i have some good kids in pep club um but they always have some kind of um uh theme or whatever so it's toga night tonight and when i heard about it i'm like those kids no but the <laughs> pep club sponsors a friend of mine she's like no i wanted to combine it with jcl this this then like you know you can you can get your kids with their with their shields out there and like the armor and stuff and you know, everybody will be in togas and the football player like run past them and you can film it for your uh, spirit video because we have a drone like we won. We destroyed spirit last year at competition because we had we had drone footage for our for our club video. And literally every other one was filmed in a classroom on a cell phone. So uh, so I was like, that's a good idea, except that this it couldn't have been on a worse weekend. Um, and so yeah. hopefully they're going to do it now. And I need kids to turn out. And everyone's like, oh, in many of their defense, they're in the band. But other than band kids, like, oh, I can't. I got to do it. I'm like, what do you have to do? Like, go do this. It's going to be embarrassing 
if we have this thing and we don't have it doesn't even look like we have a club there like y'all freaking go and do this and so it's just it's just an it's annoying and then christina's it's christina's birthday weekend because she's her birthday's halloween happy birthday that's uh, awesome she said thank you from the other room um, <laughs> it <hurt>. <laughs> so it's happy birthday for her um on monday which is just an ironic birthday because she doesn't like scary stuff uh so mm. and i'm behind in work because i left everything because i didn't i didn't want to do a bunch of work um in my uh, during my lunch break so i didn't actually work a bunch during my lunch break i actually like read got to do something fun and i'm like i'll catch up this weekend and it was like yesterday afternoon that i realized wait i'm out of town tomorrow because i got to take the kids to a freaking quiz bowl competition all day tomorrow and then i'm out of town sunday because i'm taking christina because all she wants to do in life all she wants to do since we've been together is in the fall go to some fall place like some place <laughs> like like a like some kind of farm you know where they have like hay rides and like hedge like corn mazes and you know fall crap and we haven't done it and so i was like oh we'll do that tomorrow and i forgot i, I like I didn't forget, but I just didn't process that it was this weekend also. So I'm out of town like all weekend. So now I'm just like, well, when am I going to do that work? The answer is I'm not. Oh, and I've got nine children who all need a freaking college recommendation letter. So I pity the person who's the last one that I write because they're <laughs> number one. Because You're going to the community college, bud. By the time I get to that last one, and some of these are kids that can't be bothered to come to that stuff. So I'll be like, I, um, you know, they're good, but I really hope they show up to your stuff more than they showed up to the, the stuff that I asked them to do. So fools. Anyway. It, so it sounds like maybe November might work out a little better for you, huh? If, if we're lucky, maybe November will be a better month, man. I freaking hope so. Well, November is always a good month because I got a week off, which pleases me greatly. Yes. Yeah. What doesn't, what I don't like is when I'm busy on all, all that, all November, like all that week, like sometimes like I'll, I get my week off for for um thanksgiving and it's like i have a bunch of like commitments that i have to do and then it's i gotta be bringing back to school again i'm like what no why did i book this up like i want a week to not do anything i got i got a a pretty busy week myself maybe not that busy but i i just literally got home like two hours ago i'm um, doing this tonight tomorrow i have my kingsguard patreon hangout so for my high tier patrons we do like a video hangout it's a lot of fun Word. Um, and then Sunday morning, I'll be doing the spoiler free chat with Joanna and Philip for Curse of the Mist Wraith. Uh, oh, Jay that's Wirth. right. Because y'all are the y'all are the y'all are the uh, y'all are the buddy reading crew. Every, listen, every listen, discussion you were video, invited. Every discussion video is you, Philip, AP, and Joanna. True you were or invited. False. Hold on. True or false? You also have a darkness that comes before uh, discussion video with Joanna and Philip. And and Raph as well. I mean, yeah, I know, Philip is at the it. center of a lot of these things. So I think that the beef here is obviously with Philip, right? Probably. <laughs> but um, then at night, I have a I'm I'm doing a, some bend the knee stuff, and then Monday I'm recording a video with AP for a close reading of uh, the Game of Thrones prologue. So that will be a really well, cool video. Fun. Yeah, that'll actually be a lot of fun. And I saw someone in chat. Um, asking me if i got the rise of the dragons book i did get that uh and it's pretty cool all the new art's really dope i mean there's not a single new word in it but you know it, it, it's a cool uh coffee table piece heidi asked me jim you're gonna do videos for stone of on the grange tower i loved your osnard video thank you very much heidi i actually did an entire trilogy if you look it's memory star and thorn here on the channel and i talk more about book two and three um so you can go check that out if you want to hear my thoughts on stone of on to green angel tower for sure uh, Colton says, what's up guys. I'm going to multitask and listen to y'all while I play through the ending of the last of us. Have either of you played it? I have. And I, I very much enjoy that game. I'm looking I've forward played, to the show. Actually. I have played last of us and last of us too. And I love last of us too. I don't like a certain character in last of us too. And just, <laughs> and naughty dog would very much like me to like the character from last of us too, but I don't because what this character does, I do not like their actions and I don't, care how, I don't, I don't care what reason I don't care how traumatized anybody is. I don't care. I don't care because you suck. Get out my face. Um, <laughs> so um, I liked the second one also. Um, and I, I too, I, I wouldn't say excited. I too will watch the show and hope that it is good. It, um, the trailer looked very promising, but we know trailers can be a bit, um, you know, for sure um i didn't what did i say that was bingo already they're talking about the bingo card like what did i bingo i don't I, know but i also have a bingo card and uh it, it was 
What's yeah. on your bingo? Can someone tell me what someone in the in Discord send me Jimmy's bingo card so I know what's on it? Because I know it's on mine. Uh, yeah, some uh let me see if I can actually find I, I, if you can drop the links to the images in the chat, YouTube might auto censor it, but feel free, Derry or or Evie or Amanda or someone to drop those in chat if you want. Um I I assume YouTube's gonna edit them out though. Um, because they have it, it's like an auto moderator thing. YouTube no. can shut up. That's right. I like they like when did we decide that like when did we switch to non Euclidean bloody geometry where we don't like any freaking like angles on anything? Like, why does every new and updated newfangled thing have to be like, oh, look at the rounded edges of this stupid thing? I say using the rounded edges of the the comment just like Jimmy does because I don't like the angled one. <laughs> it's I, a border radius, bro. But I liked I liked freaking YouTube the way it was. Why is it all like? It feels like it's gonna fall off my phone now. That is <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, but. It made sense to me. Are you saying the world's flat, Alan? Are you saying the Earth's flat? I mean, so. no, because I'm not a crazy person. <sighs> Alan, I, I feel like I feel like I gotta come clean. We don't have to talk about this. We can just move on. You should wait I, till you should wait till you've heard the irritation go from my voice before we talk about this. Just, just like <laughs> you should put a pin in it and come back when, when it doesn't sound like I'm irritated. <laughs> The, the beginning, the beginning of these is never, it's never the best time because I'm always irritated when I start this because I'm grumpy because I just got back from school a week of freaking school and I'm always, I'm always tired and I'm always irritated, but I took headache medicine and I've got coffee. So you should pause that for 30 minutes before you go, before you say what you're about to say. <laughs> How's the weather? <laughs> it's cold. It's cold. I don't like it. Oh, oh my God freaking cold um oh 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 they're they're saying abby i thought they were saying abby like my friend abby um no yeah i don't yeah. like abby abby sucks from last of us too i don't like her and we do have some good news here in the chat uh if i can find it yeah so books of bengus khan says you both did not overhype people in warlord finish yesterday and i miss it so much so the propaganda has worked i know like i know um, i know. You know that's why i hyped it yeah, and you had that discussion, and it was weird. Like, I checked my spam folder. You know what, Jimmy? I Let checked me. my recycling bin, and I didn't get an invite <laughs> that for me. that. Jimmy, a lot of times, like, a lot of times, like, you have seen those freaking discussion videos where they got, like, eight people. Like, our Faithful and Fallen ones. Thank goodness I wasn't there. Y'all had, you would have had nine people. Or not Faithful and <laughs> Fallen. I guess it was the, the second one. Like, those discussions, they, like, you can't. I don't know how you can have a discussion with that many people because because you know everyone's everyone's not going to get to say what they want to say and I'm not going to be the one to not say what I have to say because so I'm I'm <laughs> going to say get, my piece. You got to um, get your stuff in, you know. I, I, I like it. It is a physical need. Like if I don't like, I feel like the in my internal pressure is going to blow out my ears. Um, <laughs> like that's why it is so hard for me to watch people's streams and not be on them and have to comment because like, like it physically pains me to not be able to reply to things that are being said, like for people to not hear what I am saying. Uh, so that's why I type in all caps. Cause I'm yelling like, because I like, <laughs> you've really sold me on typing in all caps. I don't know what it is, but now when I join like your live stream or anyone else's, I yeah. feel the need to type in all caps. It's, for, it's for emphasis. It's it's like, you're, I don't type in all caps for everything, but it, it's especially if it's response to something, um, I'm yelling my dissension. Um, <laughs> I'm screaming into the void. Uh, but Jimmy. <laughs> So this started, Joanna was supposed to read it a hundred years ago, but you and Philip got her reading a whole bunch of stuff instead of that. So well, she finally on. deigned to read it. Let's look at this. Let's look at the bright side. You told me, Jimmy, you got to read Warlord. You and Sarah were like, you got to read Warlord. And I did it. You did do that. I Is did that do that. That happened? Yes. Yeah. I thought you had already read Warlord. Am no, you're it? you're the one that sold me on Keeble. You're like, when I you do it, you got to do time Keeble. Is anymore. I don't know what time is anymore. So it was always going to be Sarah, because Sarah and I read it together um, back when Sarah read things with me. And then um, <laughs> I... Uh, <laughs> Sarah just catching strays. <laughs> <laughs> Shots across the bow. Look, I can't help where it goes. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Joanna was supposed to read it and then didn't. And then... Um, and then I forget. And then I was talking. And then I, like when I like first met Theo, he was talking about it. And like 
he was like, we should talk about Warlord. I'm like, we should talk about Warlord. I'm like, once Joanna reads it, we should talk about it. And so then those were the first three people that I saw like in my proximity. And then, and then they will tell you, I'm like, okay, how big do we want to make this? Cause I have like two more people I can add to this, yeah. like that I want to add to this. And I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna let Jimmy get mad at me. Uh, cause, I, cause, I, Cause I knew it. I knew it. And the second you, you messaged me, I'm like, Dang it. Dang it. I should have, I should have, I should have just had five. Um, I think four is the cap. I mean, I like the discussions that are four. I don't mind five, which is why I was like, like if you had like, like if you had been like, Hey, I like, I'd really like to talk about warlord. I've been like, dude, let's do it. Like it's, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but it is what it is, but it is good. Ben is right. It is good. I mean, and I miss it also. You're right about a lot of stuff. I mean, Carlos is saying his uh, girlfriend and him are planning a month of Allen next year and will read Long Price Quartet, finish Great Coats, Blackwing, and a KJ Parker book. Uh, Carlos, good for you. You're you're a man of the people. We'll send you a banner. Let's put it up in put it up in your town. Um, I also uh, wanted to shout out Caitlin here. Said I should should be reading Ship of Magic, but you two are just too entertaining. Plus, some of my faves. We appreciate that very, very much. Their hob. If you read Hob real quick, Caitlin, you could probably join Jimmy and Joanna and AP and Philip for a discussion. <laughs> I like how you're turning this back around on me now. Look, I don't know what to tell you. Someone's asking when I'm going to read Long Price Quartet. I would say very early. Uh, yeah, next, next year, year or the end of this year yeah, i would say word 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 um but uh what else everybody say? i i did have a uh something to slide across my desk here um that i feel like i should share and that is alan's oh, bingo I, card I my bingo card i need to see yours so well, let, let's just go through yours real quick right cicero which i haven't done tell us what he's eating i haven't do i do that often i haven't done yes, that. yes. do i really yes <laughs> <laughs> <laughing at? laughs> Do I really? Yeah. Oh man! Oh, Kibo did oh, a love Bears collection this time. This time, Jimmy, I ate beforehand. Usually, like Christina's, like we're just finishing dinner, like right as it starts. So I have my food in front of me that I don't <laughs> eat. So you're not going to get it this time because I'm not eating. So good. All right, refill drink. Definitely going to happen. Minch and Daniel Abraham. I don't. I, I think do I mentioned him. Yeah, I think I that was my it. fault. Rant education system. Pretty didn't close. Do didn't do it. I'm, I'm so tired. Oh, I got that one. I definitely got that one. Mention. Bill of a Mastodon. Haven't done it. That's good. That's, I got a, that's AFK bio. Nathan J. Kristoff. Uh, <laughs> haven't done that. Mention Sam Bonds. Haven't done it. Displays cat to camera. Not yet. Rant capitalism. I, so I like my, you're, I'm being mischaracterized. Like I do not like ranting against capitalism means that I'm being characterized as a sickle waving Soviet, which I, and I, I don't have, I have neither hammer you nor bleed red. I have, uh, no, stop it. No, I do not. I do not have, I, like, I do not, I have had neither hammer nor sickle, but I do not like institutional corruption and greed, which unfortunately tends to align a lot with um, the system that we have set up. And as I've been talking to my kids uh, this week um, about uh, the, the Roman conservatives versus like Caesar, and the conservatives are just the ones who thought that the system, the Roman Republic, the constitution worked they just need to purge the corrupt people from it. And then Caesar's like, no, 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 the system does not work. Like, like a, for example, the system is the one that allowed these people, these corrupt people to like become so entrenched. So that's, that's, that's um, where I am. Um, now, I don't want to talk politics. I haven't said yet. Um, <laughs> ancient ancient Rome, Rome. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. I mentioned ancient Rome. Dad gum it. Uh, I didn't. I don't have time. Well, I haven't said that yet. Um, Mitchell K, I haven't mentioned KJ Parker either. And if, I'm going to mention if, him in a little bit later. Out, we won't. Um, like the problem is everyone keeps mentioning him in the freaking chat. Like y'all go read something else. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, stop it. What, um, <laughs> uh, um, what else? I'm trying to read these other comments. Oh, what? Yes. Jimmy's. Oh, it's with me. All right. I was a pro. Y'all definitely so, like, just like I, I analogize everything to Rome. Jimmy's the wrestling analogy. True. Mention Bobby B. We haven't done that. Unhewn throne, haven't baited yet. Knee injury. Okay. Um, I'm reading it next I'm year. reading oh, it next got year. It. Got it already. Mentioned Vegas food, not yet. Has <laughs> Chelsea delivered food? Does she, I, guess, I guess I never see that. I just oh, she's that. covert, bro. She slide, she just, she's a rogue. She slides That's it awesome. in. Wrestling yeah, stories haven't done that. Bay, Alex. <laughs> Drinking around with confusion. I had a child come up to me and 
seriously said, is there a difference between Greek and Latin? And I, said, I mean, everyone knows that there isn't. I, I'm not going to debate it. I said, yes, one is Greek and the <laughs> other is Latin. The Greeks and the Romans are not the same people. And one isn't even in the right alphabet. Mention equipment setup. Oh, that's a good one. Mention Oshkosh Bay. We'll get there, I'm sure. Oh, wait, no. Oh, dang it. I mentioned him. Dad, come it. Reskilling, learning the code. Mention a read along. <laughs> Got it. Mark that space off. <laughs> no, I'm gonna knock it down. I don't read that fast. That one requires me. Mention everyone doing long form stuff. That's true. Everyone is doing long form stuff. And then let's go. I probably said let's go by now. I don't know if you did, but there's definitely two. So we're both at, we're both at two and two currently. Yeah, um, it, it'll be interesting to see how this one shakes out. Indeed, it will be because I've forgotten what's on mine already. <laughs> I did want to highlight. Nick said that Keeble narrated a Lovecraft collection. Danang, where? Interesting. Yeah. Dang, Derry's listening to Winter King right now. Yes. Yeah, old, old uh, corn dog has become quite the phenomenon uh, in our community. Uh, and I think it's also not just because of Warlord, though, because a lot of people are liking the sharp books that I see reading them. People are That's really good. digging them. And I you've like been it. a big supporter of the sharp books. Sharp does it. I mean, Cornwall just writes really good villains. I like. Um, yeah, so I'm st I'm not even caught up with sharp. So even when uh, Sharp's Assassin came out last year, um, thank you, John. Thank you, Joanna. Exactly. See, um, uh, nice, nice. Um, so I've only read about half of the sharp books and I'm hoping to like, you know, I just read the first three again and I will slowly continue working my way through those the same way I'm doing Discworld. Um, uh, extrusive thought. I'm trying to read these. I'm trying to read these people chats. Um, uh, oh, right. Amanda asked how long it took me to read it. And I three can days. say it. No, it took me three weeks. I think it was three weeks. A, a week is seven days. Jim. You know why? A day you know why, is though? Hours. And, why? And get your bingo cards ready because I don't read that fast. You have started this propaganda that I am some like supercomputer. I mean, when... every wrap up is like I finished 11 books this month. It's not true. It is. It's not true. It's propaganda. Someone go look at his last wrap up and tell me how many books he read. I can tell you. It was like five, four. No, no four one believes that, Jimmy. Y'all go look, go, go. Do your own research. Y'all know that's the era we're in. Go I did research. Listen, I, <laughs> the truth is whatever you want it to be, right? I, um, I went on a rant today with my children about that. I said, oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't, I can't. I was talking about Diogenes and one of the philosophers and we were talking about, I was talking about like, like whatever, like <laughs> you, dang, see, they hear me yelling. And Charmaine says, Alan's the only one who can make text audible. That's correct. That that's is correct. So true. That's, that's right. So you were explaining your kids how truth is not a real concept? I was not telling them that. No, I was not, no. You were no. arguing against it then? Yes, I was. I, I was. I was saying that. I was, I was saying you, uh, like, you can like living your own truth doesn't mean anything because it implies there's a whole bunch of truth. Like, hey, the Earth is both flat and round simultaneously. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> Only one of those things is true. Sorry, I don't care that 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 you feel that this is true. I don't care. You're wrong. Like you're wrong. You're wrong. And feelings lie to me all the time. So <laughs> I like that. Feelings lie to me all the time. That's they pretty do. Good. That's pretty good. I, I had a couple of those moments this week being in a work trip all week. You know, oh, it's yeah. like <laughs> Yeah. We you and I we have those moments all the time and we we mess each other on Voxer and we rant about crap that we're like, this is petty. Like we're feeling petty right now. Let's get out. Let's let's talk about what's making us feel petty. You're the one person I know that I can just be petty as hell to. Like, oh, I can yeah, just... I'm, I'm like, I get it. And you're like, you're being ridiculous, but I totally understand why you feel that way. And yeah, I'm, like, I'm, like, Thank that, you. I'm, I'm like, that would make me mad too. Like, that, Sometimes I you just about have that to verbalize also. it. You just have to say it out loud. And then you feel better. Correct. I have to. Someone said it's called extrusive thinking. I, I get it. I get it. I got to say it. Um, Kater Katarina asks, what do we think happens to our books when we die? Uh, I hope they get donated, at least some of them. I also would hope that someone would sell some of the more rare ones because they're worth a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my wife would probably do something with them. I, she wouldn't keep all of them. I promise you. <laughs> She'd get, she probably she would donate most of them every time we're throwing anything out. Every time. She's like, I was going to donate those. I'm like, well, are you going to do it? Because I don't want to, I, like, I would rather throw it in the trash. My time is worth more than me taking this random thing that nobody's going to want down to, <laughs> down to the, but 
She donates everything. I'm like, no one, no one wants my tattered neon Genesis Evangelion wall scroll. Like, well, that's I not mean, I a bunch of weaves. Sorry. Um, <laughs> never mind. Uh, think of something that people don't want, and it's like that. I, I don't have. I don't actually have one of those. Anymore. You don't. And not anymore. Are you lying? <laughs> yeah, not anymore. I definitely used to. I, I certainly did. I had that in a Tenchi Muyo wall scroll. Nice. Angela wants to know if I read Long Price Quartet, will you have a discussion about it with me? You probably won't you... ask me. You'll ask AP and Joanna <laughs> and Philip. You you're acting as if you don't have as many hours on this channel as I do. I mean that's I mean that's that's true that's true. Um, uh, so I mean I'll talk to Jimmy about it or whatever. I'll talk to Jimmy about anything. Um, <laughs> that is Carlos. true. Christina, Carlos says Christina laughing at Alan in the background is a top tier chatting with nuts trope. Are you, are you having a hernia? <laughs> I think this is, I think I'm being baited. I think I'm being bear baited right here. Does Alan I, like Jay Kristoff? Like, I don't know if Oso knows or if Oso is trying to get me to rant about him because I don't like, no, I don't like Jay Kristoff. And that's all I'm going to say. I believe that half of the chat when me and you were together is baiting. <laughs> to be honest. True. I don't know why everybody's so hostile. Oh, Colton has a, a really good pointed question here. He says, Alan says Blackwing is so good, but is it, it really? Good. He's yeah. only read the first book. If it was so good, then why hasn't he continued the series? I mean, you're right. You're right. I mean, it's like, <laughs> there's not really an excuse. I even reread, um, I even reread Blackwing in August on, um, I listened to it in preparation of reading the second book. And then I've just finished other stuff. Like I finished um, the Aurelian cycle and then nice. I, and then I read I read a Pratchett book, and then I I picked up this self published uh, novel by um, Baptiste um, Baptiste. What is it? It's right here, Baptiste uh, Pinson Wu. That's right. Um, and it's about and I had never heard of him or his book, but Tori had him on her channel, and oh, nice. it was a book about flipping the Three Kingdoms China. And I have loved since. Since high school, I've loved Three Kingdoms China because when I, well, before I knew what Three Kingdoms China was, when I had a Nintendo, like an NES, I played Romance of the Three Kingdoms and I didn't really know what any of that was. But then when I was in high school, I played Dynasty Warriors. I played every Dynasty Warriors. And I have, since then, like, I've loved the Three Kingdoms period. And I even have Three Kingdoms. It's, it's one of the Chinese, uh, the great, the great Chinese works of literature that China considers. There's four of them. And I've read the first book, but they are hard to get through because there are like, I'm talking about thousands of names and they're all, and you know, it's all, uh, they all have the same claim, the same, the same surname, the same family name. So there's a bunch of Tsao's. It's like uh, Tsao Tsao, Tsao Pi, uh, Tsao, Tsao Hong. It's, it's so a bunch of very similar, very similar names. Yeah. I would get confused. But the war much. stuff is amazing, but it's very, very detailed. So this yeah. is, this takes place. It, it, like it's it's like historical fiction of that and I, and i ended up talking with kyle actually kyle like this is a problem like kyle and i like we bond and like i erase all of his crimes and i remove his name from the prescription list and then <laughs> like literally two hours later he says or does something that is just like that's just intolerable like it can't say intolerable. It just immediately goes back on the list like it's like he's like the guy who's freed from prison that can't stop committing crimes like he can't <laughs> like he gets a stay of execution and he like immediately like robs the next like the next you know item shop he sees and then ends up right back right back on that on the on the wait awaiting the hangman's news and this is read by kyle just so everyone knows uh yeah, here's a yeah. panel here yeah uh, and so we talked about, like, we bonded over Dynasty Warriors, like, like, yes. And then I was talking to the author. I'm like, dang, is this guy in it? And he's like, oh, yeah, that guy's in it. And I'm like, <gasps> and so, and so I, I, I went ahead and started it because I knew Kyle was going to read it and, like, wanted to, I guess, buddy read it with me. But you know what Kyle does? Like, he'll start it and then he'll read, like, 500 pages, like you do. Like, he'll finish it in, like, a day. Um, and so I had to, like, start early so mm -hmm. that by the time Kyle picks it up, I will have, like, a uh, head start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's so fair. that's what we're reading now. But Blackwing was next. The next book of Blackwing was next, but I jumped the queue. Whoops. Mm. But Ravencry is next. Colton. Um, 
Uh, holy hearted melissa says i finally finished touch of light i think i need to read it again since i'm pretty sure i missed some things because i did audio while driving and this brings me to my point that you did a little bit of a cover reveal today you want to tell the people about that yes yes Thiago abdallah's new book a Sh uh, shade of madness is coming out like it, it the cover reveal was out today like pretty much everywhere it's awesome it's a cool cover like that if you like griffins like it's freaking cool cover and i like blue things so i like that it's blue everywhere um and um I guess my words are on it, and I, I think they're in all caps. Yeah, you have a, a endorsement I think on the cover. Caps. Yeah, um, I mean, the problem is so the problem is, and here's the thing: this is why this is why anybody who wants to talk about anything is always going to go, go to Philip because Philip is so eloquent and is like you know is you know the the professor of professors, and so Philip's always so eloquent and is like I really enjoyed. The, the structure that was laid out by the, the and and I'm and I'm just like man, this was a ride. This felt <laughs> so pro, and, and it's fine when it's in video, but when someone transcribes my words down, it sounds like I've been like I've escaped the asylum, and they're trying. <laughs> they've got the chains ready to drag me back. It's like who is this hyper child? We need to put him back in his room. Yeah, I think you could have done better. I think you could have said something maybe along the lines of like self pub as it ought to be written. I feel like that would have been a really good endorsement. I was so I last night I interviewed um Erin Evans, who is uh she just wrote she has um Empire of Exiles, which is a book uh coming out in two weeks, um hmm. that I read and really enjoyed. And um I was talking to her and she got a blurb from R.A. Salvatore. Like she knows R.A. Salvatore because she worked for, she worked for Watsi and has written, you know, seven Forgotten Realms books. And she got an, like an actual blurb from R.A. Salvatore. And I was like, like, you got like an actual, like he said something that was actually pertinent to your book. You didn't get a germ, a germ blurb. Like, you well, know, I'll tell you what, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt, but I got to tell you something, well, man. George wrote like a two paragraph endorsement. For Lies of Locke Lamora and mentioned like world building and stuff in it. That's like, like when you used to read those books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was just like shocked when I saw it. I was like, wow, George. Speaking of Germ, I saw, I, for the first time today, heard him talk. For some oh, reason, the video of him talk. popped up today. Like, and I had never heard him speak before. I just saw him in his little sailor hat and I just assumed he owned a lighthouse and every <laughs> now and then went around the shoals to make sure that everybody was okay. But I heard him talk today. <laughs> <laughs> the raw sadness that belong that is in this man's voice i was like i felt so bad i immediately no one was in the room with me it was in my classroom like i was by myself in my classroom i said out loud y'all leave this man alone because like you know I'm he's a, like uh, course working on the winter winter yeah he's like uh so it's definitely the question that i i knew people were gonna want to know what kind of progress I'm making. And I, I, I mean, I've been working uh, the last three or four days. I worked on it. I read those earlier chapters. I didn't like them. So I, I, I went and redid those. And uh, it's the same as same news as always. And I'm Dude, just the saddest part was whenever he was like, I got to write these down before the ideas go out of my head. <laughs> I was like, God damn it, George. But dude, he uh, he said he's 75% done. I mean, that that's crazy because some people were convinced that he's only written like a couple hundred pages. But at this point, I mean, you know, he, he's he's making some uh, some progress. So a, as someone who's a Gurm fan, uh, very, very exciting. And also he did some stuff with um, Stephen Colbert about is our new monologue writer, George Martin going to be able to finish in time for the show. Like he took some jabs at himself. Funny. I, I like George. I like listening to him talk, especially whenever he talks to other authors. Cause he, you can tell he's like truly fascinated by other people that do the same thing as him, which I think is a good quality to have. Um, he remains curious, which is cool. Uh, Brent says, Jimmy, your next ultra grimdark book series needs to be gap cycle. Just read book three and it was great. One of those series is hard to recommend, but I could recommend to you. Yeah. You have got me interested in gap cycle and I want to try something else from Donaldson because I didn't love the first book from Thomas Covenant. It, it certainly isn't a bad book, but it wasn't what I was looking for at the time when I picked it up. So I probably pick up gap cycle before I pick up Thomas Covenant, uh, just because Donaldson's such a huge influence on the genre genre. Genre. By Indeed. the way, I loved your new video. Your oh, unpopular oh, oh, opinions. Yeah, my unpopular opinions. Well, it was good. Whatever. It was people. People liked your bad opinions. It was my fastest, like, 
like YouTube gave you the green. Yeah, it was my fastest like num like most view video in X amount of time or whatever. It was like it was like one point eight k views in less than twenty four hours, which is not common for the crap that I put up. Um, oh, thanks. Sorry, freaking Mallory Keaton. Like, shut up. Like, I can't find my dang remote to turn her off. Um, anyway, I, I'm so behind in the chat. I'm trying to see what people are saying. It's all good. We're making our oh, way through. I got bingo. How'd you get bingo? What did we say? We only covered two of those things. Well, apparently I picked the wrong card. There's another Alan bingo card that's specifically for this show that I don't, that I, it, I think it's in discord. I already closed it. So <sighs> show me. Have, what is yeah. Robin Hod? Oh, rings of power. And, uh, house of the dragon. I watched neither. Yeah, people are like, dude, Al you think Alan would like House of the Dragon? I was like, absolutely not. Really? He would. Oh, you would hate that show. Hey, y'all mark this bingo card. Li like, literally, one of my students tells me that we're, we're, we're learning about the House of Macedon and Philip and Alex and, like, his scheming wife and, like, the power plays for, for um, uh, for you know, who's, who's going to be his heir or whatever. And as, as, I'm, as I'm teaching it, this kid who watches House of the Dragon religiously is like, this is House of the Dragon. Like, yeah. this is House of the Dragon. Like, it's House of the Dragon, but without, without dragons. I'm like, are you serious? And he's like, yeah, Philip is this guy. Olympias is this guy. Alex is this guy. Like, he just lists off the characters. I'm like, are you? I'm like, so Gurm definitely knows history. So it's oh, yeah. not impossible that, you know, and it's not impossible that, that, that he could have been influenced. But I just thought that was really cool that they're like, yeah, basically. That's how he remembers. He's like, yeah, this guy is. I don't know their names, but whatever. you would love fire and blood, by the way. I don't think you'd like the show, but I think you'd like fire and blood because it's a historical text. Oh, those are the same. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, yeah I'm sorry. Yeah. House of the dragon is based off fire and blood, but fire and blood is a multiple sourced historical text that Gurm wrote in world Word, during Joffrey's cool. reign. It's yeah, it, it's, it's pretty cool. Who's um, the historian. Uh, you have Septon Eustace, and then you have a court jester named Mushroom, and his accounts of history are all ridiculously incorrect. <laughs> like he, funny. he kind of does your thing where you like he'll go into hyperbole a little bit, right? Like, oh, you were saying they were ridiculously incorrect. I assumed, I assumed it was like, I assumed it was going to be like Kyle recounting. Oh, no, 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 it's like he says the most outlandish things. Like the baby oh, came out and had dragon wings on its forehead, and you're like, Mushroom, no, it didn't. Shut up. <laughs> so someone asked why i hate philip so much i hope that if you do not i don't actually hate philip um, you don't? Please, don't please don't i mean no i'm the nice one no one really understands that i'm the nice one um that happens at school too like people think that my me and my uh engineering teacher neighbor my buddy bell that we're like a couple and they think that i'm the dad i'm i'm like I'm not the dad. Bell doesn't care about y'all. I'm nurturing. And I say it in that <laughs> voice. And like, they're like, yeah, that's dad energy, Mr. Walker. I don't know why they won't. I don't know. They're like, do you want to be the mom? I'm like, not really, but I am nurturing. Y'all are awful. Oh, you always tell me, you know, you, we, we kind of talk about uh, many things mm -hmm. offline, but you, you've, you've said multiple times, I think you've said on stream too, is that like you used to be a really angry person and you used to, you know what I mean? Like you've changed a lot. And I've never asked you this and I, and I wanted to tonight is like, I know that you made changes, you know, but what were they? Like, how did you get yourself to stop being that way? Um, I'm not. I, oh, how, how did I, I just... At some point, I mean, at some point, you you kind of you, you come to a realization that you're not um, that. I mean, you're miserable, and that a lot of the reason you're miserable is your fault, not other people's faults, right? Hmm. Um, and that that was my problem. Is I was I was like, I was not one. I had undiagnosed Asperger's, which causes a lot of problems that I don't understand and don't know how to deal with. Um, yeah. Being diagnosed with Asperger's would help me a lot. Um, uh, so that helped me a lot. Um, because then I could identify the things that I didn't understand. And I didn't feel like, you know, something was standing in my way. I'm like, Oh, okay. I have this. How do I, how do I, you know, work around it? Um, because I was not happy where I was. I was miserable and I, you know, it was everybody else's fault. And as it, it's not that it was everybody else's fault. I was just mad because everyone else seemed to have an easier time. And um, yeah, it's, it's difficult, like knowing you're intelligent and, not feeling like you're living to your potential um, because it's like, I am, I am intelligent. Why am I, why do I have struggles when, you know, 
dum dum over there like is fine so like it doesn't make any sense well it does because dum dum i mean well he may be a jerk but dum dum can put one foot in front of the other and get something done as opposed to you know witching about i have learned to not complain about everything all the time there's a second part to that and then like not do anything about it like mm. now i complain about things are but i try to make steps to make things better instead instead i used to wish too much that things were different than they were and mm. that was where it stopped i still do that i still think that i shouldn't like things shouldn't be the way they are like yeah. people shouldn't have to do this christine and i shouldn't like we freaking um just for the halibut uh looked uh to see how much we could get for like a, a mortgage like a home loan right yeah. um and she just shot it like uh like our budget when we first got married was like like the ceiling was, you know, like 220. And there were a bunch of decent houses here like three years ago for that. Now, oh, 100 yeah. grand more, 100 grand more. And yeah. so for like a $350,000 mortgage loan, because the thing is, the problem is, is I, I am not going to pay a lot of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars for something that I'm okay with. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Like it's too much money to be like, yeah, I guess it's that. fine. No. I'm not. I'll do that. I'll pay twelve dollars for a book that I'm like, oh, okay. I'm not. I'm not buying a house for that. So we get our, um, uh, we, you know, we get what it would cost with interest interest rate, and like if we bought a house that was three hundred fifty thousand dollars, like what we would be paying mm -hmm. on monthly on the mortgage, and it's more than what I make in a month, and that's yeah. it's just frustrating. It's it's just like does our are people not supposed to live anywhere like here? Like, is mm -hmm. that, is that just what we've decided that only rich people can live here and two people who literally work full time in a profession are yeah. like, our choice is live in a, live in the neighborhood where we're going to get shot because it's, oops, my fingers in, in, in focus <laughs> because it's, because it's right next to the freaking meth lab. Like, like th that's where you can find the cheap houses. Like property values suck next to the meth lab, but have you considered selling meth? Someone, someone said that to me today. No, a student <laughs> said, "Have you considered doing crack?" That's what they said. Well, no, you don't do it; you sell it. I mean, I mean, yes, yes, I have considered it. But it's the free I market. I, I know, but like, I don't, I don't want to sell drugs. Like that's for, like it's ridiculous that someone would have to sell drugs to have money. That's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, so I, I would agree. Yeah, it's just it's just stuff that it's just stuff like that's frustrating. So that was kind of a that was kind of a, a deflated thing. And then we got our we got Ava's ashes back. And before mm. our freaking last time when I had to put Nero down three years ago, um, they handed me a piece of paper for the the crematorium place. And I got to it was like you know what kind of like box do you want? Do you want to engraved or whatever? And you know it's more expensive, but I always did that. I, I had other things in my mind. My cat was being put down. So I didn't think to ask for that piece of paper. So they just defaulted like to the lowest tier package. So for all my other four cats, I got these nice ornately engraved wooden boxes with gold plaque with their name on them. And then for poor Ava, we got like, it looks like a paper mache, like white biodegradable like box with... Mm a barcode on the bottom that has her name printed onto it. And I'm just, and you know, Christina picked it up and she was in tears and I was like, no, no, this no. So we called the next day and it's my fault. I should have asked for the thing. I forgot that they handed us one of those last time, yeah. but it's fine. We ordered, we were able to order one of the nicer uh, boxes and the plaque and, uh, the only thing is we got to transfer the ashes and I'm not doing it. So uh, either Christina is going to do it or my buddy Finn is coming down in the summer and he's like, if you, if you hold it till then, I'll do it. I don't care. <laughs> so, so, I mean, that's, that's, that stuff's discouraging, but I don't get mad about it anymore. Like, um, yeah, I just, I just like, I just don't get, I don't get mad about it anymore. Um, and I'm also a Christian and that, that helps me like that, that helps me a lot. Um, to where before I was, I didn't have any kind of compass on anything at all. I yeah. had, I was just, I was mad all the time. I hated everybody. Like I hated everybody. 
Um, and I hated my brother. My brother and I didn't speak for 10 years because I was mad at him because I protected him when we were young. Our ste my stepmom is mean and she's always been mean. And so when my parent, my dad got remarried, like she instituted like some draconic rule with no, no like no rule, like no reason behind it. She's just like, y'all y'all have to shower at night. You can't shower in the mornings before school. And I said, why? Like my hair gets greasy overnight as a teenager. I'm like, I don't understand why this, why? And she's like, no, you can't. And I'm like, well, I'm going to shower in the morning. So you can shut the water off if you want. And she always like on Wednesdays, it was her house cleaning day. She would lock us out of the bloody house, lock us out of the house. We couldn't, we get home from school. We had to go do something. We couldn't go to the house because she, anyway. You all right? Oh, so I, she, like, I shielded Ryan from a lot of that. And uh, I thought Ryan, like Ryan, you know, he's a, he's a head of software at the Navy base. He has, he has a house that he bought uh, three years ago that has almost doubled in value. Oh yeah. Um, and he built that, like he, like they designed and built the house and it's almost doubled in value. And he has three kids and uh, uh, you know, his wife doesn't work and you know, he has all the stuff that I'm, so I was mad. I was, just, I was just mad at everybody. And so I hated him. And I thought he wasn't appreciative. Hmm. Uh, turns out that my brother, he wrestled in, uh, in high school. Someone was like screwing around with him, one of his friends, and put him in like, tried to like, like do him in a, a, a throw on the bleachers, smashed his head. This was after I moved out when I was 18. 15, smashed his head in the bleachers got a horrible concussion. He doesn't remember a ton of our childhood. So I'm ticked off at my brother for not like remembering. Like, yeah. He doesn't remember. I didn't know that. I learned that when I decided to not be a douchebag and repair the relationship with my brother. And hmm. uh, so now my brother are thick as thieves, like all the time we get together and we talk about one piece for the Walker boys. Yeah. My brother is, my brother is, we like the exact same things except that I am incredibly emotional at, if you couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. And my brother is, yeah, I hate that. That sucks. I know. <laughs> it's just matter of fact. Yeah. Like he's, he's dry. even keeled and, you know, is always like having a, like he's, he's a walking wound. Like, I don't know if he has any original parts anymore because he's always injured from sports. And then he always helps my dad move crap, like do physical labor. And my dad didn't call me because he knows I'm, one, I'm no use. Two, I'll say no. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going <laughs> to do that. That's, that's, it's too hard. Last time, my brother helped my dad move a 600-pound gun safe. My dad is the king of jury rigging stuff. Like, it's always like, I got a better way. Dad, you don't. <laughs> yeah, just relax. They make a thing for my this. My dad is a wonderful man, but you don't. They lost control of the gun safe at the top of the stairs. It went down crushed my brother's thumb between it and the wall. If the banister hadn't been plastic and broken, it would have taken his thumb off. Oh, yeah. His freaking bone was out of the thumb. Like, Ew. my sister-in-law called my dad and reamed him. And I'm like, Ryan, say, like, this is why we don't do things for them. They know. <laughs> like, three of y'all trying to move that? That's ridiculous. Like, and I'm like, he didn't call me. He's like, I know you're lucky. So my brother's just, he's just really easy going most of the time. He just yeah. wants everybody to get along. Um, anyway, that was a long story. Uh, but I just got tired of being miserable. Like I just got tired of it. And I, I just, I was just tired of being mad. I was tired of being angry all the time. And, you know, I found some hope and uh, I would, everything was just bleak. Like I just never thought it was going to get any better. And now Things could be better, like, but, you know, you know, things just now I've learned how to cope with things and things are bad, but I'm, I'm, I'm no longer a miserable jerk. Anymore. Yeah. Well, I, I think that, but, you know, well, I think there's also a potential that maybe people, um, kind of cast that back on you because you're so like, you're very, you're like me, very emotional. Yeah. That's a sick mug, by the way. Where can I get one of those? Um, I have a uh, Red Bubble store. I think the link's in my description. If, yeah. if not, I didn't put it down there yet. Then whoops. Well, you uh, should put it in there because I would definitely buy one of those. Dude, 
like I finally, I've been waiting forever. It's like, like I, I set it up a long time ago and I, I just, I just am slow to do anything new, like anything new. Like I'm just slow to do it because it makes me uncomfortable. Same. So finally I said, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a piece of merch. And I ordered my coffee mug and I love it. It looks great. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think it looks great too. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, well, I was just saying like, you know, uh, I, I kind of relate to you because I've always been very emotional. It's actually something like as I grew up, I, I realized I needed to dial it back a bit. And I feel like that there is a stigma of being emotional that either makes you one seem not, not you even, I'm just saying in general in society, it's like, you're looked down upon like, Oh, he can't control his emotions or she can't control her emotions. And then that somehow is like a knock against your intellect, which we, we I, we've talked, I've talked to you about this before. Uh, a lot of times, like, because when I was miserable, the only thing, the only thing I clung to was the fact that I was intelligent. And I am, the, I was the, I was the tyrant oppressing the peons. Like I wielded it like a sword. Nothing made me happier than to like, well, actually blade to swing the fact that I was smarter than someone in their face, because that's the only thing that made me feel good. It's mm -hmm. the only way I felt like I had any worth. So I have mm -hmm. long been, and because I struggled with Asperger's and didn't realize why I was struggling in school when I had problems, um, I was like, like, like I always felt stupid in times. So I don't like feeling dumb. So a lot of times, this is why, you know, I get concerned and I don't know if it happens, but it's, it's my own like insecurity that I am because I am so emotional and animated and because of the word choice and the, the way that I choose to structure the things that I say, I feel that people, I am always afraid that people think that I am not intelligent mm -hmm. just because I talk at a, at an unreasonable volume and say words <laughs> like crap, uh, right. instead of, you know, and so, you know, so that a lot of times I'm like, Ugh. Joanna's mom thinks I'm rollicking. She says in the rollicking. In the, I love it. Chat. I am rollicking. I, uh, I read this book uh, on the way back from Denver today and, uh, I was listening to audio book as I was reading it and it's called dark matter by Michelle Paver. Oh, it, I thought you were going to say Blake Crouch. No, everyone thinks I'm talking about the Blake Crouch, but yeah. Amanda um, actually recommended it to me in my Discord, and uh, I was reading it, and it's actually really fascinating. So it's like 1937, and they're going on a excursion to the Arctic to like do things with this ice cap, right? And the whole thing is, is this place in the Arctic is haunted. Like That's the gimmick, right? But the main character is one of my favorite like characters of the year because he is so prickly and so mad at the world. And this is like 1937. So everyone else has went to a more prestigious university than him. His father came back from world war one and had been hit. Um, I think with like napalm or something, or no, not napalm, but like nerve gas. So his father passed away. Then his mother passed away. So he didn't have the money to go to like Oxford. So he goes to like a more second rate school air quotes. And he's a physicist. So he's kind of like the black sheep on the crew. And he hates everyone. <laughs> and, and, but, it, but like, you can't help but to feel something for him. Yeah. And like, there's a group of dogs they're taking to do like sledding and he hates the dogs. Like if you hate dogs in a book, like you're automatically a bad guy. Right. Yeah. But as the story progresses, he starts to realize what real loneliness is when he's secluded in the Arctic. And he said, even though I thought I was alone in England, I was surrounded by millions of people and I never realized I wasn't alone. And he he comes from a very angry place of the cards that he was dealt, but also just the fact that he felt like he was treated poorly and to see him grow. It's only a 250 page book, but the growth of this character over those 250 pages and some of the awful stuff that they go through because it is a horror novel, um, really incredible. And I want to read more of Michelle Paver. I thought the book was excellent, but um, kind of reminds me a little bit of, of what we're talking about because the character is very black and white. Yeah like either loves it or hates it. And the guy who ends up kind of opening him up a little bit, his name's Gus. And he's like, everything is so rigid with you. Like that has to be exhausting. That has to be so hard to go through life like that. And at first, uh, you know, he's like, screw you, dude. But then he starts to think about it and he's like, yeah, it, it is exhausting to think this way. It is exhausting to be so rigid in, in, uh, it's definitely in like that. Like I, t I tell my angry kids that I have, um, I did call someone a dumb, dumb Evie. It's, I apologize. I'm not, I'm not actually calling anybody a dumb, dumb. It's just <laughs> the hyperbolic speech. Um, uh, but, um, 
Yeah, I tell them, I'm like, like the angry ones. I'm like, guys, it's exhausting to hate everything. Like, mm-hmm. it is exhausting to hate everything. Like, I know everyone thinks I hate everything, but it's not, but it's like, none of it, like, I don't actually hate everything. Like, I, I'm talking about, like, I used to, like, act, like, I used to spend a lot of, like, brain power despising these things. And, like, I just don't have, I just don't have that kind of energy anymore. So, um, <laughs> you've been beat into optimism. <laughs> Like it's or just, more apathy, maybe. Like it's just, it's just, <laughs> oh, it's just madness. Um. So. Yeah, and- no, I totally, I totally get it. Um. Siva Reb says, "Have either of you read Parable of the Server? I haven't, but Octavia Butler is is a pretty high priority. I don't think I'll, if I get through it next year, it'll be like on a whim. I'm not planning to read any of the works next year, but who knows what, what will happen. Um, and Tanner says that he's reading Elder Race uh, by Adrian Chofkowski based on your recommendation, Alan. So your influence still. Yeah, that was my first um, sci-fi of Tchaikovsky, and I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. It's a novella. Nice. I like Ogres. Ogres is my favorite. Of, I think Ogres uh, will probably be what I read next, and I need to read Children of super Time. Super short. It's super yeah. short. Um, it's well, it's not super short, but it's like 200 pages. Yeah, um, but I like it a lot. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read these. I'm trying to read these freaking chat. I talked for so long that I didn't read any of these dang things. No, it's good um, stuff. So I I, if, I, if I said anything else that I need to apologize for, that happens frequently to me. I say things. I'm like, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Um, why am I Mapo? Because a car. <laughs> Akarium's memories, your brother's memories. Oh, it's actually a pretty, that's pretty good. No, you, my, you are Mappo. Ryan, no, no. My younger brother does not get to be Akarium while I'm Mappo. <laughs> oh, Mappo. Mappo Walker. No, a stupid Mappo. Um, so I like those characters too that like are angry all the time. But the problem is, is usually when people do them, they're just insufferable. Like they're, they're, they're they're trying to so hard to show how angry they are all the time that they just make them like it's like this is a miserable experience for me like i don't hmm. like, like why do i want to read about this person that literally hates everything it takes it is a skill to be able to write something that is that actual um you know that's actually compelling to read as opposed mm-hmm. to you know missing the mark and it's, it, it's the same thing with the edgy characters like oh, when yeah. i talk about edge lords i'm talking about people who like didn't do it right as far as i'm concerned like you went too far into like you're you're trying so hard to show me how edgy they are that all i can see is your hand and yeah. a big sign that says edgy edgy exactly i hate that i want to read dogs of war uh, michael mindelin recommended it like incredibly highly and so did nano 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 tyrannus who has read everything tchaikovsky's written yeah. So Katie Carl says, um, and I just wanted to bring this up because it kind of pertains to what we were t- talking For about. Sure. It says, really sucks how the line between a trauma response and autistic Asperger's response is so thin. You can make yourself crazy trying to figure out what is wrong with you. Interesting. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I need to read some Tchaikovsky. And Andrew Krause says, if the Patreon wheel lands on my pick, you'll be reading Butler, Jimmy. Well, that is the Patreon wheel wreaks havoc on my TBR constantly. In December, I'm going to pick 2000 pages from the wheel. I don't know how many books that'll be. It might just be like Monte Cristo and one other one. I don't know, but I'm going to pick. Hold 2, on. When pages. are you picking 2000 pages from the wheel? In December, I'm going to spin the wheel until I hit 2000. I thought pages. you wanted me to not talk about how many books you read. I and mean, you literally, books, you what, literally three books? a flex saying, I'm going to, this is not the only thing I'm going to read in December. I am going to spin the wheel until I have 2000 pages no. worth of material. The only and other thing then, I have is, is two towers, which is a reread. That's all I got. I don't know about that. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know about it? Even in 500 pages of book, it's only four books. Christine and I do that all the time. Um, there's a there's a <laughs> one of the fake commercials on SNL back when SNL was still kind of funny, and it's um it's Alexa Silver, so it's like Alexa for old people, and they never they <laughs> they they can't remember her name Alexa, so it responds to any kind of like name that's in the general vicinity. So it's like got Keenan going, Alyssa. <laughs> What's the temperature outside? And like Leslie, Leslie Jones looks out the window and she sees some kids like down the street, like, like, she, like they're down you know, across the street, like playing with something. And she's like, Alessa, what those kids doing down there? And Alessa or Alexa just goes, they are just playing. She said, like, they what now? They are just playing. They what? They are just playing. And then all of the old people after Alexa tells them something that they don't agree with, they go, I don't know about that. Like they can't, they, can't, they can't agree with what. So anytime, 
anytime we don't, Christina, I don't have a, we don't have a, a comeback to what somebody says. We just pull the old person. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, Jimmy. I don't know about that. I have not read Spider Light, whoever asked. Uh, yeah, someone said, have either of you two ever read The Wolf by Leo I Cobb? Have, I have read The Wolf. Yeah, and uh, Le Leanna has been trying to get me to read that for a long time. I finally bought it, so that's step one. Um, and the premise sounds amazing. Alan, you weren't so hot on it, though, right? You thought it was just fine? I liked it. Um, it's a debut novel, so it mm. does these things that I read in a lot of debuts. Like where what? They tell Without me spoiling. the same thing over and over again. Um, and it's not, it's not a deal breaker for me. Like if, if, if it's like your 12th novel and you're doing it, like, then I don't want to read it because, you know, I understand that people get better as they go. Like I get it. Um, but like, there's this one, it's it, three things. One, they keep saying, they keep calling this one guy upstart, like upstart is not a word that people use all the time. But literally every time they talk about this guy, they say upstart. They say it when they're talking about it, about him. They say it when they're talking to him. I, I told Lena, I'm like, Lena, they have got to stop saying that word. They've got to stop saying upstart. Stop it. And then every single, like there's a bunch of different clans, like, cause it's based on what would, what if, um, what if like the Neanderthal, like grew up alongside like evolved right. along which i think i think that's cool it is really cool but like there's a bunch of different tribes and every tribe it's ridiculous like oh and saw this guy who was the leader of this tribe who were they were known for being the greatest warriors in the land and literally it says the same thing about the next tribe and then the next guy the chieftain like he could never he had been never been defeated in battle i'm like every guy can't be the, the best warrior <laughs> like every <laughs> And, and well, <laughs> then it was just a lot of like, they gave me information. Like, so they tell me information about, you know, one of the main characters, like he did this and this and this. And rather than trusting that I remember when he told me 50 pages ago, they say it, he says it again. And mm -hmm. it happens a lot like that. Like there's one big like scheme that they put together and the scheme goes through and it's very obvious why they did the scheme, how the people that were schemed responded, like mm -hmm. what was happening. But it just feels the need to explain everything about it. And it's just like, you didn't need to do that. Trust me that I understood everything that just happened here. Like, yeah. And so that that's a little irritating, but I, I mean, I liked it. I definitely liked it. I did not not like it. So that, that that's actually a pretty good point, because that's something I do see a lot in debuts is like the need to explain something to me whenever I. I prefer to have a little bit of a leash. Like there's definitely times where like, I don't want to be hung out to dry, but I think especially the more I read, right. Um, I mean, hell, we read Malazan, right. So like media res drop in it, that that's that to the extreme. So, you know, being able to balance it somewhat helps. So what? Finish, finish. I'm, I, well, no, I was just going to say, it reminded I, me of something. I prefer to have a leash. I, guess. I actually get, I actually get to drop in here and correct people on, I get to correct the, the Malazan crew. And it makes me okay. sad to me. So, so. Okay. The phrase is, let me put on my actually glasses. It's actually in medias race because in uh, is, takes the accusative case. Race is accusative plural. Oh. So it has to be medias because race is feminine. It's saying in media race, we've combined both cases that follow in so it has to be in media rebus no it needs to be in media race i guess it hold on so so in so in media race isn't wrong it's just it means in instead of into um I, the phrase is in medias race because it's into the middle of things i see race is singular too and plural sorry well i think i said media res so i think i was way off oh i mean that's fine that's i mean that's how it's pronounced if you don't know macrons that's that's fine that's totally fine you're saying an e so in medias race look at that y'all just learned something latin right here because in plus accusative means into in plus ablative so in media race means in um and so usually when it's the when it's the book tactic it's because you're being dropped into the middle of the thing. Yeah. So to be fair, never mind. Like to be fair, it could start in. <laughs> Did you just argue anyway. with yourself out of your well, own argument? But it's because the phrase is in medias race, but an argument can be made that in media race is perfectly acceptable. Um, because wait, no, hold on. No, 
Wrong, because race in the ablative is re. So it has to be in medias race or in media re, R-E, or, or long E, because race is nominative. It's not, uh, none of this makes any sense to anybody. I, I'm lost. Anyway, anyway, I hope <laughs> Philip heard that. He, I'm sure he did. He's here. Philip, I just taught you something. And unless you already knew that, in which case I didn't. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Sebastian says, can't wait for the wheel to land on Amanda's pick a book by Jimmy. that he hasn't written yet. Yes. Yeah, so one of my patrons, Amanda has decided that her Patreon pick for the month is my book that I always talk about writing and never write. So if I land on the patron, well, I have to like write it in a month. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about a month, but I, was say, that I gotta, I gotta put forth some sort of effort towards it because now what I do is I just go into my writing channel on my discord and I just throw out premises. I'm like, can someone write about this? This sounds cool. Can someone else do it? We've um, got to Chiago. What were you laughing at? Chiago says you woke up the baby laughing at something I said, but I don't know what it, I said. Guys, what you need to understand is that I forget what I said like <laughs> two minutes after I've said it. My students will write down quotes that I say and they'll read them back to me. I'm like, I don't remember saying that, but it does sound like something I would say. So I don't know what I'm saying. Well, Philip um, thinks that we should be called upstart. So look, no, do not call me an upstart. Philip's yeah. the upstart. And congratulations to, uh, to Chiago for being Yes, I forgot to say that when we were talking about the, the thing. Yeah. Finalist. For? Did I not tell you that, honey? Fill out the, the rest of it, though, Alan. For, for what? Tell the people what it's a finalist for. Oh, it's a finalist for Fitbo. It is in the top 10 out of 300 self-published. Pub- <laughs> S-P-F-B-O, right? Is that, is that? S- I don't know. Spiffbo? How do you spell that? S P F. Bo, it's yeah. a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, there sure. have been some really notable winners, and for Tiago to become a finalist in that is a huge step up, and uh, pretty awesome, honestly. So, congrats! It's really good. It's good news. It is because I and I asked Tiago like like if the pressure was off now because you know like the finalists get so much, you know, like press. Like even if even if you know it doesn't win, like making the finals is. I mean, that's, yeah, that's it's yeah. Uh, Jean asked, uh, Hey Jimmy, any chance of a hob interview in 2023? I remember you were hoping to get something together a while ago. Really wish you were, uh, more recent chats with her on YouTube. Um, or th- there were more recent chats. So I've reached out to Robin hob, um, through pretty unofficial, uh, methods and have not heard a response. I, I think I could get a hold of her. I just haven't done it, uh, mainly due to the fact that I am nervous. <laughs> so it, it, it'll, I mean, I would like to do that. I don't want to put a date on it. Um, but yeah, that's still a possibility. I have interviewed a few authors here on the channel and I've had a good time doing it, but I don't ever see it becoming like a super regular thing. Um, it's always based on the fact if I have things to ask, right? Um, like I, I have some authors that I would love to sit down with. Robin Hop happens to be one of them. Um, and then, oh, there's a refill. Hit the bingo right. card. And I, I, my mouth. I can't help it. Well, I, I'm going to hit my bingo because I would also love to interview our Scott Baker, but uh, he doesn't do interviews. So I don't think that one will ever happen. So, yeah, I mean, there's a chance of a hob interview. Um, I have a few other ways to go about maybe uh, reaching out to her, but uh, it'll just be whenever I kind of feel comfortable doing it, I guess. And if she agrees, clearly. I mean, there's no guarantee of that, right? So um, just lately, I switched jobs and stuff, and there's there's a, a lot more going on with that. So I've been trying to kind of dumb down things, not in a bad way, but like stick to what I know, right? My book reviews, the live chats, and some of the extra ideas that I've had or interviews that I want to do with authors have kind of been put on the back burner for now just to, so I can kind of stay afloat in life. So Where the spine is? <laughs> Freaking Amazon... Uh oh. Yeah, that's fine. Stupid. The... Freaking trash. <laughs> what happened, Alan? So, fu- so, freaking, this book finally came in. You know when this book came out? August 5th. I pre, sorry, October 5th. I pre ordered it. I got it today. And mm-hmm. I didn't order stupid paperback. I ordered the hardback. And they sent me this paperback. And this paperback sucks. It sucks. It feels like, it, like, this is a sucky hardback or a paperback. And this is how my spine came. Hold on. You can't see it. Hold I on. can't see it. Looks it's, like a great spine to me. No hush. Look at that. That looks like a pristine spine. Look at that crack, Jimmy. 
You're not going to crack it whenever you read it? I mean, no, because I'm two thirds done with it on audio. <laughs> I heard it's really good, by the way. It, I heard it's heartbreaking. I'm not at the heartbreaking part, but oh, I was, I guess, never mind. I'll talk about that when I finish this book. But like, Terry Pratch is, Terry Pratch is mean, but, and I was like, why is he so mean? And then it got to the part where he's about book signings, and I played it for Christina. Uh, just about the stuff that he like he complained about this and then he complained about that and he complained about this and he complained about that and he's just like well i don't understand why they can't i'm at a signing why they can't just give me a table and a chair that's comfortable to sign books in i'm trying to make them money and christine's just poking me she's just poking me the whole time she's just poking <laughs> me poking me <laughs> anyway. uh, corsman asks alan why don't you read megan lynn home robin hob novels i can't find anyone on booktube has reviewed her book so you get to go against popular choice Everyone like you, reviews Robin Hood. No, he's saying he, he's saying read Megan Lindholm, her other stuff, her urban fantasy. Oh, mo probably because I don't like urban fantasy. <laughs> Wait, I, so you don't like Dresden? Uh, is Colton here? <laughs> I think so. Then yeah, I hate it. <laughs> Dresden, Dresden, Dresden. The Dresden Files is probably the most mid series that has ever been written. Oh, shots fired. Look, they're going to dislike your video, not mine. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Make sure to unsubscribe from Alan's channel. Look, not... all, if I want people to unsubscribe, all I got to do is upload a video. That's <laughs> so true, right? You upload a video, it's immediate 5 to 20 <laughs> <shit. laughs> <I know. laughs> Nutmo Rymo time, Jimmy. <laughs> that's pretty good. Oh, tough. my gosh. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. I haven't reviewed any Megan Lindholm yet uh though evie yeah uh, i think chris book yeah i misunderstood it also evie i also misunderstood alan saying the earth can't be round and flat then says both of these pronunciations are correct yeah i mean that well that's because one is anglicized and one is uh, uh one is actually because we don't use macrons in like english we don't i don't throw a macron over the over the e so also we say caesar and cicero instead of kaiser and kikaro because i'm not saying kaiser every time i'm talking about freaking caesar and i'm also not saying kikaro it's cicero it's kikaro, <laughs> christina though. chimes in from the back i like kikaro all right christina <laughs> <laughs> uh, Books of Vegas Con says, does anyone know what's up with Baker? He's just off the grid. Hey, yeah, uh, he's just been largely offline. I, hey, I, yeah, I, I don't think that he will. Uh, I don't know if he'll ever be back, to be honest. Did uh, he get run off? No, not uh, really. I, I, I think he had other stuff going on. I don't know if there's health stuff. Honestly, it's all pretty much speculation at this point. Um, I think his uh, brother said something on Twitter and was like, he's, he's alive. <laughs> like, you know, kind of like, don't worry, he's still alive. And everyone's like, whew, thank God. Uh, but he used to update his uh, blog all the time with like heavy philosophy stuff. Like I read it and I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. Like <laughs> I cannot follow this. I'm not smart enough. Um, oh, you know. Derry, Derry, don't worry. That Hob interview will be with Joanna, AP and Philip. So you won't be a part of it. I promise. Oh, geez. So you just need to go ahead and, uh, Go ahead and uh, get used to that. <laughs> Andrew Krause says, we'll get Hob for you, meaning the interview. He said, it'll be like that scene in The Muppets where they kidnap Jack Black. And kidnapping is a crime. Please do not commit a crime. <laughs> it's a federal crime if you go if you go across state lines. Oh, nice, Thiago. Um, oh, there's one on sub for Hayton Dresden. Nick, Nick, Nick. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, Nick. And secretly, I don't think that. Just oh, nice. Andy Smith says he uh, finished Wizard of Earth Seed today. Pretty good. Alan, have you read any Le Guin? Have you? I don't know who that is. That's Ursula not... Le Guin? I know who that is. I'm just trying to get people around. The up. second book is fantastic. I, have, I haven't read any of Earth Seed. Tombs of Atuan is probably going to make my top 10 books this year. That should be on my bingo card. Yes, it should. Y'all put something about top 10 books. On... Yes, Colton. <laughs> don't laugh at that, Colton. I was trying to crush your spirits. Dang it. Alan. Christina. Jimmy's about to say something to make me mad. <laughs> Listen. No, <there's> a... <laughs> no. I, Jim, Jimmy, Listen. you are beaten. Everything is about to come out of your mouth is unreasonable. Unreasonable. You, we have to... you like people staring around, looking at their belly buttons, doing nothing. <laughs> That, that's that's half the crap you read. Did, did enough babies not get burned for you? Is that your problem? 
Is it because it wasn't written in 400 million words? Hold on. Is that, is that what the problem is, Jimmy? I haven't even got to state my case what? yet. What's, Jimmy, 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 <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. I don't know what it is. Like, like, did you walk away, like, not wanting to... <laughs> end your life and that makes and that makes you sad like because that's what zara that's who zara is now i love zara me and zara are besties but zara's like i'm dnfing guns of the dawn i'm like what zara you only like books that fill your soul with gut-wrenching despair and give you no hope for the future that's zara grimdark has driven her into like into some like listen pit no no you listen <laughs> you listen you listen so I, <laughs> so I read a KJ Parker book. Finally, well, you, you didn't read it right. Well, hold on now, hold so, on now. So I, I read, I read the company, which you have recommended to me, and man, people from your Discord came and like told on you. They oh, really went up on Goodreads. All right, first off, a three out of five ain't bad. G Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. I want you to go look at the other books that you rated three out of five. Oh, the company no. you have put it with is unacceptable. Listen, unacceptable. If I'm being honest, it, I'm, it's if I'm being honest, it should be a 3.5. It should be a 3.5, I think. You're so generous. Thank you. No, I mean, there's a Very there's generous. a difference between a 3.5 and a three. In a 3.5 three star. You know. All right, All right so for, fine. Go ahead, let, Jimmy. Go let, ahead. Me let me tell you about the company. I can't wait. KJ Parker is a fantastic writer. I uh, guess. His I style agree. and prose is very attractive. I, 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 I thought it was super easy to read. Uh, also, KJ Parker's super intelligent. Uh, nice. Crafted some very, very interesting characters. Um, I love the beginning of the book. I love the... Uh, well, you know, the endings did... So like the we're not going to spoil anything, no, but like, like did it. you not feel it was a little bit rushed? Like a little bit? Yes. It, 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 well, I okay. did think it was a little rushed. It I, was a little I abrupt. Do, I do believe it was a little abrupt. Um, I liked it, but I mean, it did get there pretty quickly. Um, yeah. So so I actually like the ending. It's it's my yeah. kind of ending. Um, it just happened so abruptly. I was like, oh, wow. Then what's your problem? Well, I'm going to... So the premise is... And, you know, this isn't a spoiler for those who are listening, but it's about a bunch of veterans that go to an island. And don't and do it. That's, 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 kind of, that's kind of the premise. I told right? you they didn't do anything, Jimmy. Well, I, I'm fine with that. I didn't. I, I, I love that premise, but I thought he would do more with it. Um, Like, how is this book a fantasy book? You know what oh. I'm saying? Oh, you should have asked me that to start with. They're not. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's, I, just, there's magic in the world but wait, are they all connected they all take place in the same world mm -hmm. yeah oh the timeline he is very he has never drawn a map there is no map <laughs> but you know it was talking about places like the vasani republic and uh all those places they appear they are mentioned or are featured in every single nearly every single one of the other books that i have read um, now there is no timeline, so you don't know when, what took place, where, but they are in the same world. And so there is, there is magic. Like the invincible sun is the God of all of them. Like it's, it's a God in all of them. Um, okay. um, and the, the, the magic is more like being able to, it's like exorcism and stuff is, is mostly the magic. Um, I, I think you learn more about the magic in the academic exercises, um, short stories that I haven't finished reading yet. Uh, but yeah, there's no maps in any of it, but they are connected. So it's fantasy in the, the absolute loosest sense of the term. Okay. Like there are almost no fantastical elements in any of them. All right. So two things. The first I forgot is about that. I should have clarified. <laughs> here's a, here's a question for you. D is the war they were a part of acknowledged in other books? <sighs> um, so I don't know. I know some wars are acknowledged like, at one in one point in the folding knife, Vasani is a republic, and then but it talks about other books talk about Vasani being an empire. So and then folding knife mm. talks about Vasani. It was an empire before, like mm. it's a republic now. So that I obviously can figure the timeline of that. Um, I don't know. I know they do reference wars, but I don't know. I don't know. They are. Uh, they. I haven't. Uh, what I liked about Tor Tor dot com did a folding knife reread. And um, mm -hmm. in it, they, it, the writer posted a, um, 
every chapter, like a breakdown of every chapter. And then at the bottom had every reference, every like Parker reference that you see in other books. So it's like, oh, here is mentioning, he's mentioning oh. the Saudi Republic. Oh, here we got the Invincible Sun. And I thought that was really cool because that was, you know, someone who's like, you know, the just kind of trying to track the geography and stuff references. So the, I actually, the implications. No, never. It, no, no, I, not the implications, Jimmy. The the Parker smear. <laughs> <laughs> no. So here's the thing. I I, I like the company. Um, and I'll and, and the second thing I was going to mention the fact that you just told me that that it, this story exists in a larger world actually makes me like this story more. Oh, that's cool. Just for the fact that it feels like this is just something happening in a bigger sense, right? Like it's just a piece, not a slice of life, but it's just like this event. That makes the book, in my opinion, better. A lot of Parker stuff is like that. It's like, hey, like, because it's just like, this is what history is made up of these things that happen. And um, they're a lot less kind of grandiose than history makes them out to be. Mm -hmm. Um, You are forgiven. And I will erase your name off the prescription list and and send a um, text to all the people who are already on their way to uh, where you are. Um, I'll call them <laughs> all. Um, <laughs> as long as it hasn't like I thought you were going to say I'm never reading another Parker. And, like, I hate this. No, and I knew I'll be honest. I kind of knew when I did the three. I was like, I know I'm going to there's going to be hell for this. Like people are going to think I hate it. I didn't. I liked it. It was just um, the premise ended up being cooler than what I got. I I, I can definitely understand that. But the writing is super. I mean, I really like the writing and the characters were great. Okay. That we can agree on. So the thing yeah. is, Jimmy, is I had read, this was my like fifth Parker thing that I read, maybe sixth. I've so, had people tell me it's not a good place to start. Well, I mean, it's, I don't, I mean, it's not if it, it, based on what you're saying, because I was accustomed to the fact that nothing was going to happen, you know, like, or that what I, like what I expected, like more to happen. Like Mm -hmm. I very frequently expect more to happen and it doesn't. And I just, I like, I just got used to that and you know, was like, okay, well I like this about Parker. Nothing's going to happen, but I liked, I liked the way that nothing happens, but I was ready for it. So Mm -hmm. I can, I can completely understand that. I was waiting for the the switch to flip a little bit. And and you know who else uh, I get the same feeling with is uh, guy Garvel. Okay. Guy Garvel. Okay. Does stuff. Yeah. I mean, obviously I, he has books where he does a little bit more, right? Yeah. But at least from the guy Garvel okay, that I've read, I always walk away just going, I wish there was just like a little bit more fantastical stuff to mm, it, which is yeah. weird because I love low fantasy. I mean, mm-hmm. I, that's I my you. preferred type of fantasy. Um, but I in no way hated it. There was no part of this book where I was like, I hate this. That's awesome. The one For- part I did not enjoy, I will say, is the wedding part of the company. Like the whole, we got to get some wives. I was just like, this is annoying. That <laughs> is that is meant to, to demonstrate just how like just how freaking Knessen he needs to just Knessen is a uh this guy i'm i'm so glad you like the character work though like i just oh, yeah. love, like these people are so humanly just they're just bad like and, and they're not they're not glock to evil they're just they're just bad people like they just are ugh I'm like, I don't want to hang out with any of y'all. Y'all are terrible. And the only one that's even trying to do any good was that, is that, is that ID? Um, yeah. yeah. Whichever one was like, Knesset, shut up, finally. ID. Yeah. Which I don't know how to feel about that character. I mean, and that's the thing. The company does have a lot of complexity with the relationships that it builds. And it, it definitely is that, right? It's the messiness of relationships over time. And especially with these, this group of veterans that have been through so much trauma. Like, that part of it all ma- is good, makes great sense. Um, I, gotcha. I just wanted the premise because that's a cool premise, man. And it doesn't help that the front of the book says Italian job meets lost. And I'm like, I don't see that at all. I read a review of the company um, that says that that is inexcusable. Like, it is. Uh, so- and said, this is so incredibly missed. Like lost. Like I was like, Oh, this is going to be some like meta stuff. No. Like there's going to be something going on here that I'm not going to. No. And, and then it just turns out it's just people being people on an Island, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I also kind of wish this, I didn't feel the survival element as much as I had hoped. Um, I got you. That makes sense. You know what I mean? So no, it's a good book. I want to read more Parker. Cool. Definitely. Folding knife has that turn that you're talking about. Um, I like folding knife. Everyone, everyone that has read folding knife and, and company is like, yeah, folding knife's probably a better starting point. But I was like, 
it's probably okay. Now I know in the future. I already told Joanna. I'm like, Joanna, read Folding Night first. Read Folding Night first. Read it with Jimmy, and then you, Jimmy, AP, and Philip can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I will read The Folding Knife next. Cool. Um, that one's I a little think, longer, right? Isn't it like 500 no, it's, pages? It's literally same, the same length as one you just read. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Is Wonder there an audio book for it? No. There's no audio book for company. I was so disappointed. The problem with KJ Parker, and this is bizarre, because KJ Parker, like, again, he lives in the middle of nowhere in England, uh, where he, you know, doesn't, has terrible Wi-Fi. And this is why I can't, like, Laura and I can't interview him remotely. Um, so... No, he just started getting audiobooks with the most recent series, how to okay. how to defend a whatever. So that is the problem. A lot of people, especially because his books are hard to get, like outside the US sometimes. Yeah. It's preventing a lot of people from being able to access him because of, there's no audio. Um, I I want like I like dude needs to just let me do it. Like I will record, I'll record the audio. Like I'll do it um because or if you'll let me i'll do an unauthorized version and i'll just like be like dude i would love for you here to it, do the audio here it is for free because um it would be so uh it would be so good you'd be um, great so at it there's just the one i appreciate that i appreciate that and jimmy that is a very measured and a, that is a very measured opinion and you should blame all of those freaking peasants with their torches I who were trying to they were trying to <laughs> rile me up pre-interview or pre-show so that i'd like Come, bing, come out and rope a dope. <laughs> rope a dope. <laughs> oh, so Christian, what's up? I'm wearing my Attack on Titan t shirt for you. Christian, um, Christian, we need to talk. <laughs> Sorry, you took, <laughs> you took away his comment, and for some reason, my brain thought you hung up on him. Like, <laughs> so, so I stopped because I thought he was gone because you took the comment away. <laughs> He is Sorry. still here. I put it back up for you. Christian, we need to talk one. We need to talk about One Piece because I don't actually have anybody yes. to talk about One Piece with except my brother who is caught up completely. And I know you're not caught up, but I'm I'm in act three of Wano and we should talk about One Piece. It's That'd good. Be, I would watch that stream in a you heartbeat. Because it's I would have no idea what you guys were talking I'm, about. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um all right, so this is the problem. So David Sloan says other books. You said you books. hated Well of Ascension. Now, hold on, hold on. Fires of Heaven, Stormfront, and Well of Ascension. Two of those books are in probably my least favorite book category, but here's the, actually, I'm pretty sure I gave well of Ascension two stars. I don't know. This might be, this might be a little fake news. I'm not sure, <laughs> but, but here's the problem. So I always try to find something about the book that like, it, it's, it's a, it's a piece of work, right? So maybe the writing didn't work for me and that really hurt my subjective experience, but I'm like, I understand what they were going for. Yeah. Right. Um, like with KJ Parker, I wouldn't say I was in love with the plot. But like, I really loved. So like, how do you balance those things? It makes me so happy. You like his writing style. I love. His oh, writing his writing style. was great. Like even and Jimmy, I don't like a lot of his plots. Like, so I'm not like <laughs> I'm a KJ Parker stan, but I'm not like I'm not I'm not a blind. I'm not one of the blind faithful. Like I'm not a zealot uh, because a lot of his books. I'm like, man, I don't care, bro. Like, I don't <laughs> care. But even even when I don't care. I love his writing style. Yeah. And so I have a great time anyway. Like I've given something of Parker's uh, three stars. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, it feels like the ceiling's high for him, but it's like, it, it's the same feeling of a GGK. It's like all this stuff is working. And then if this one piece clicks with me in my subjective experience, this could be like a home run. So like, there's a sense of like just personal disappointment whenever that kind of thing happens. But like, I can't really speak enough about how well written that book was. Um, also just really smart guy. <laughs> you can just tell he's on a different level. Um, but like even well of Ascension, you know, I don't like that book, but Alan, you did a review of it and I think you made valid points about the siege. And I was like, yeah. I see what you mean. And even yeah. fires of heaven, uh, Jake Bishop accosted me because I said that, um, that wheel of time, yeah, Will is on five. I, I said that it was inexcusable that a certain death was off screen. And, you know, Jake brought up a good point, And I think that he is correct. I still don't like it, but I think that he has a really good point as well. So I try to be um, as non-biased, I guess, as I can. But this is also why I don't like ever really talk about very not very often, at least star ratings, because like I'm I don't have any consistency. I don't care. Yeah, but but at least, Jimmy, you are one of the few, the proud, the star givers. Because if you watched Philip and AP and Joanna's thing, 
Like they sat there and dunked on the freaking hoi polloi, the plebeian class that are those of us who use star ratings. And they say, they say it like this. They're like, it's okay if other people use star ratings. And they use that exact tone of voice, which clearly communicates that no, it's not okay if other people use star ratings. Come and on. Did you watch that? You no. Have, you have it. Watch it and listen. Tell me, tell me the outrage that you feel after they are personally targeting you for being such a such a dunderheaded, knuckle dragging mouth breather, barely out of the primordial soup. <laughs> that you would you would deign to give something a star rating. Joanna, Joanna said, and I quote, I hate them. They should get off the internet. Wow. That does sound like Joanna, doesn't it? I know. It? I think it's the influence of Philip. I would agree with that. It's it's that hate Philip brings, you know. It's all true. Uh, um, Ian Esselmont, because I think Ian Esselmont is at least uh, I think Ian Esselmont probably gets better. Everything I read by Brian McClellan is like it is not better than the, the thing I read before it. So I think that Esselmont will probably grow as a writer more. And I, why y'all make me dunk on McClellan? Like, I don't want he seems like a jolly guy. Like, I don't <laughs> like he just seems like he's loving life. And you know what? Guess what? I haven't written a book that sold a million copies. I would write a book and sell three copies, right? So, do you think he knows him. of you? What do you think he knows of you? I hope not. That would make me so sad. But that's why when I'm on the thing, when I'm on like when I'm talking about him, I, tr I like I don't ever be like, and this is just like it's just trash and I hate it. Instead, I'm like, I just don't understand this decision that was made. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know why every noble's only person if they're not a main character, every like noble person. Their only personality trait is disdain for commoners. That's their own. It's it's as if like kind of consistent. It is consistent, but it's like <laughs> like that, honestly, that sounds like something you'd like to be honest. No, what? No, like they have more motivations than like that. It's it's just it's just like you're just uh, ev like. It's like, you know, the Brechtel, the, the Bechtel test, where it's, it's a Bechtel test for when women characters are written. The Bechtel test is, are they talking about anything besides men? Then it, if, it do, if they're not, then it doesn't pass the Bechtel test. It's like, can they talk about anything about how much, other than how much they hate the poor? Like, I don't think nobles sit around talking how much they hate the poor all the time. I don't think they think about, the, the, they think about commoners at all. I would, I actually uh, side with you on this. There is a, controversial scene in house of the dragon um where people were very outraged that a lot of commoners were killed and people were like they didn't even consider it and i'm like no they did they just said oh this is like a royal purist that just yeah. did this and uh it turns out they're also not a good person there are no good guys they yeah. hate you they hate the peasants oh that that's freaking awesome christian impel down marine ford awesome when you finish when you finish through marine ford we should definitely talk because that's a great place to um to uh post-mortem reconnoiter or whatever um what do i not care about what can i not care i don't i have no idea <laughs> what do i not care about i'm getting uh caught up here um mick scarfield says just finished the serentine mosaic duology that. by guy grab okay books of the year for me uh, but I think I'm a bit of a hipster and preferring sailing to uh, Serentium over Lord of Emperors. So one thing I want to mention real quick, I always think I know the title of Guy Gavriel K books until I actually read it aloud. And I go, oh, that's not what it's called. Like I thought, <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was sail sailing to Selenium. I don't know why until this very moment. I've thought that in my head until I read that out loud. So um, it's like the lines of Al Rasan. I always get mixed up as well. Is Alan frozen or is yes? Alan... I wanted to see if I could convince you. Got frozen. me. Yes. You got me. All right, cool. I thought I, was <laughs> gonna, like, I had my contacts in. I thought they were gonna. I thought they were gonna give me away. Yes. Um, I didn't mean to. I just was. I was processing what you were saying, and then I realized I'd been still for a really long time. And I'm like, I'm just gonna lean into it. Um, I... <laughs> Jake Bishop is convinced that. Uh, Serentine Mosaic is going to be would be my book of the year if I if I read it. Um, I I think you would uh, really like Under Heaven. I bet I bet I would too. Really bet, like good. my one of my priorities for next year is, and this is excellent because he does have a bunch of standalones. Is reading more Guy Gabriel K. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Hold on, let me, hold on, let me, let me keep going. Um, we're uh, almost. Bern- yes, Bernage. I want to know the author's name. It was Michelle Paver who wrote the um, Arctic horror novel called Dark Matter. Not Blake Crouch. Michelle Paver. Um, my friend Amanda recommended it to me, and it was a great. Ho- uh, we only, we got a couple of days left in October, so if you're looking for a scary book to read, that one definitely has a lot of atmosphere. I think it's almost more melancholy than it is <laughs> scary. But sorry, I'm reading. I'm reading. <laughs> my favorite thing is when Philip and Joanna lean into my, like my, like monstrous characterization of them. Like they don't try to refute it. Like they just lean in like what Philip and, and Joanna just did. <laughs> Philip does with that smile too. That's just, it, I always, have it always makes me laugh when doesn't, doesn't even try to refute it. Just, just, just I mean, what is he going to do? Say that's not true. I, I, I know because then, I'll, because then that, that just fires me up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, read by Kyle, who uh, we mentioned earlier, says, hello, random strangers. I can't stay, but I just thought it was an excellent time to say I finished four books yesterday. And I wonder what your guest has to say about I thought it that. was five. Oh, no, your 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 record was five or what? Would you, you say know what I have to say about achieving? Kyle? That's it, it. No, it's obscene. Like it's obscene. Like Kyle, this is why this way you can't buddy read anything with Kyle. So Kyle, all Kyle does is buddy read stuff with Sarah and with Bookborn. And then when I'm like, "Hey, Hillary, do you want to buddy read something?" She's like, "I don't have any time." I'm like, "You just said you're reading something with Kyle." He's like, "Yeah, but Kyle bullied me into it." I'm like, "So you're saying that the only way to get you to actually read something with you is to bully you?" So when I'm asking you. I'm actually doing the wrong thing. So you're promoting aggression. Okay. And that was where a villain was born. So. I mean, Andy says four books. Alan's read four books this whole year. That's how, that's, that's how many votes you're going to get next week. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. I would vote for Andy. None of that's true. Oh, I'm going to start a vote for Andy. I would definitely vote for Andy. Uh, Corsman says anyone who's ever played Crusader Kings knows that uh, playmates has to be kept down with an iron fist. Crusader Kings is a fen- phenomenal video game. Phenomenal. So good. <laughs> uh, Max says, am I reading the same series? I'm a third. Uh, I'm in the third powder mage book and there isn't that much clash between <laughs> classes. Um, it's is definitely it the first. Well, okay. So the problem is, so here's, here's probably the issue, Max. And, uh, and, and you're making an actual, actual point. Um, most of the abilities, most of the abilities is dead by book one because of the revolution. Um, I've re- I've been reading the novellas um, that that all take place before Promise of Blood, and so maybe that's my problem. Is that's the la- those are the last things I've read, and 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 every one of the novellas is self published, so they did not go through the same process as the released uh, uh, books do. Mm. So, I mean, I don't know if that's anything to do with it. But all of this, it's because the novellas are about like Tomas's rise to field marshal or whatever. And Tomas is a commoner. So it comes up all the time, all the time. So that's a good point. Um, I have not actually uh, read book two and three. I'm going to. I'm going to. Um, but I haven't yet. Brennan says it's called The Promise of Mid. <laughs> Dang. I mean, it, it promises better and does not, does, not, does not deliver. It makes me sad. <laughs> It makes me sad. Um, hold on. Uh, Joanna says, I think that that was in reference to people's opinions of KJ Parker. You said, I don't care. Oh, oh, I do. I, I <laughs> no, no. The, I don't care was about the dumb, the, the stuff that Parker is like the, the plots, some of Parker's plots, some of the stuff he's writing about. I'm just like, I don't care. Like, I don't care about what, what this is about. Like, this is not in my, this is not in my area of interest. It's not relevant to my interests. So, um, but he's a great writer. Jake says, I'm not necessarily convinced the Serentine would be your book of the year. I am, however, convinced it will make you like the Byzantine oh, Empire wow, more. The Byzantine Empire more. What's your problem with the Byzantine Empire? Stupid Eastern Empire. It got to go on for a thousand more years while the good one fell because a bunch of dumb people couldn't get their crap together and stop killing the emperor every two years. Well, so, I mean, if it if it was uh, better, it should have lasted longer, right? No, no. It no, was why? better, objectively, because it was... But it didn't last as long. Yes. Well, I mean, it, it did because it 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 let it just started earlier. So now, were the dinosaurs around in this time or no? Jimmy, you know that there were no dinosaurs in Rome. <laughs> no, cause Caesar, Caesar came in on a Velociraptor. I thought I'm going to let you know if that happened, that would be amazing. And he I, and he said, "I'll be back." 
Jimmy, hold on. I got to write this down. This is my new, this is my new book. <laughs> this is my new book. And dinosaurs. Dude, it sounds sick. <laughs> Doing it. I'm just, I'm just going to call it Jurassic Park, but I'm going to write it in Latin. Um, I mean, Philip can confirm because he, uh, he says dinosaurs were togas. Philip Chase. And Philip is a doctor, so that's Philip peer, Chase. That's peer reviewed. Philip Chase. You know that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> did you know that Philip likes did you know that Philip likes um uh like uh you know Welsh and 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 Saxon and English um mythology and history? You know, you know that's what he says. That's what his like degree is in and stuff. You know how yeah. he plays that? Do you know he hasn't read Winter King or Warlord Chronicles, which is about those very things? I mean that actually does surprise me because I feel like Philip would love Philip when Philip reads it, he's gonna like he's gonna lose it. I I that is one of the safest bets that I can make on, yeah. on booktube is that Philip, when he finally reads it, he is going to love it. Um though, interestingly, well, Philip likes everything, well, which is good. Um, because Philip doesn't actually do audiobooks. So Philip will be mm. reading it, but he'll know how to pronounce all that Welsh crap. So he'll know that four <laughs> fifted. Is spelled G O R D Y D D D D Y D D D Y D D D D D D D. Yeah, some of those names, man, like they throw you for a loop. I mean, it feels like really you're being thrown into an epic fantasy just because like I, I'm dumb and I can't pronounce all of them. Andy says, I definitely agree with Alan. This is crazy. That a classist critique that is half ass is one of the things I hate most in popular fantasy. Probably why I don't love Sanderson. Shots fired. Like, I think. I think because Andy's so busy with his election stuff that Andy has to make his like the time he spends on booktube like really count. So he has he has to like he like throws a grenade. He pulls the pin, tosses a grenade into the crowd and then like flees and records the footage like (laughs) it's an old world star. Yeah. 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 Uh, Evie wants to know if she needs to bully you into getting a KJ Parker discussion. I mean, Evie, oh, I forgot he loves KJ Parker. That was a long time coming. That was a long time. And the, okay, so the great thing about Evie and I is we like, com- we both are in love with the writing, but we are completely opposite in the things that we like the most. In the Evie really loves the meta, the meta, metaphysical, philosophical, um, kind of ec- the exorcist religious. I think um, I would like that stuff. Yeah, I think you would. I think you would too. Um, that's so you can dip your toes into novellas with those because his novellas, his novellas divide pretty clearly into the philosophical metaphysical um kind of uh just it's it's the it's just the meaning of life religious exorcism demons angels type thing and then there's the politics military ones i greatly favor the politics military ones evie greatly favors the other ones so our ratings are like this the 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 story that she liked least in um, academic exercises is one that I have ranked as one of my highest because of that. And so that's what, that's what I, 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 I respect Evie's opinions on that. We're just looking for different things. Um, and yes, you can. Once Zara and I finish uh, Savages, that's the last standalone novel we haven't read. We're going to have a, a Parker discussion and talk about all that stuff, but we got to nice. finish Savages and Zara is being cosmopolitan currently. So um she uh, hasn't uh, had a ton of time to read. Uh, TK claims that Philip was an eyewitness to uh, the Arthurian legends. <laughs> he's, he's, I think I think it's to the dinosaurs wearing togas. Oh, I, th- I thought he was just kind of <laughs> old. I, I thought he was just I, I believe you, Philip. Philip. I think Philip. I think Philip would, would love it um, when he actually reads it. I also think Philip might enjoy Stoner. Philip would definitely enjoy Stoner. Yeah, yeah, I think anybody that's been in academia would probably have at least some. Well, the thing is, Philip's a professor. He said, "I don't know if like it'll be it'll get too real for me." Um, but Philip, when you let me actually ask Philip, have you ever um, uh, been someone's like doctoral thesis advisor or like had to <laughs> have you sat on a, a thesis committee thing? Because if you have, I must know your opinions when you when you read that book i have to i would love honestly as much as i've enjoyed the book and i have a lot of things to say i would very much enjoy you and philip discussing stoner from being teachers like i think one of my favorite things to talk about philip with is uh, about with philip is education because yeah um you know he has like a completely different perspective um from 
being a college teacher, but Philip also teaches um, in college. So in college, significantly less English is required. So Philip also understands the fact that um, he teaches a bunch of classes that nobody cares about. And I'm not talking about like the people who like it in him. I'm talking about like that nobody being society and the, the powers that be care about because it's not like directly equatable to a job or whatever, mm -hmm. um, just like the stuff that I do. So, oh, you have? Oh, Philip, please read Stoner. Please, please read Stoner and then, and then report back because I would be, I would be so interested uh, yes. to see what you think about the scene that has the dissertation in it. Um, it was my favorite scene in the book. <laughs> Oso says the Allen quote about Andy will be putting his opponent's attack ad taken out of context. It I can't wait. It won't. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Evie's saying pulling the wings off of angels. Um, his um, uh, da -da 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 -da. no, no, no. Savage's book. But I, I mean, I, I knew all the words of that song when I was, I still know all the words of Savage's. Um, it's just, I mean, if I sing them, people get mad at me. Um, yeah, Starvel. Uh, the uh, Parker's new novella that's coming out. We read it, and I it was it was like one of the ones I liked the least. It's like my second least favorite novella. Evie Evie would give it six stars. It's her purple and black. Um, so so yeah, that's where our opinions kind of diverge on that. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's what I thought it was when you first recommended. I was like, I'm not gonna. Re I don't like reading books about like the only book that I I don't. Like You're not a stoner, Alan. So my problem, so my uncle is okay. dead, uh, but he was uh, an right. alcoholic and addicted uh, to meth. And he basically like, he, like my mother's side of the family has not been the same. Uh, so, like he just, he, ru he ruined everybody's lives, like ruined everybody's lives. My grandma, if she hadn't have died, uh, cause he was, you know, ended up living with her because my grandma and I don't have children, so I'm not making any judgments other than the fact that this guy, like he was stealing from my grandma. He like sold, he sold a bunch for crap, uh, yeah. for drugs. And, uh, you know, if she hadn't have died, she was going to lose her house because he had like maxed all of her credit cards and all. And she didn't know because she's just a nice old lady. And, you know, and, and he dies from, from, it wasn't an overdose, like, like alcohol, like cirrhosis or something like that. Um, but, uh, my, my friend and I, my friend Franklin and I, we went, when I was in college, we were going to Alabama to see Rent and my uncle and uh, my, his wife, Aunt Donna, who she finally left him. Thank, thank you, Donna. Um, so we stayed with them. Donna goes to bed. This bro, this bro busts out his freaking meth pipe and offers it to me and my friend. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I'm 22, right? Like, I'm like, what on earth gave How was the it? impression that I want your meth pipe? Oh, you didn't do it? No! <laughs> I told my, I, to, I called my mom, my mother reamed his, oh man, I do not want to, um, I don't even want to imagine what that conversation was like. <laughs> um, and so I, I, I don't like reading things about, addicts i don't i don't like mm -hmm. like it's just something that i don't really enjoy except for eddie dean um eddie dean i think but i hate i hate the eminent sage and junkie um <laughs> yeah. but and it's a it's a credit to stephen king that i rem still remember and say so many things so many things from dark tower still say thank you sign uh, I, I say eminent sage and junkie frequently. My students have no idea what I'm talking about. No. <laughs> Eddie Dean is a fantastic character. And Alan, I think you said you did not do the audiobooks for Dark Tower, but you should do a reread with the audio with If Frank I do Muller. a reread, I will. Dude. I definitely will. I love audio for rereads. I Dude, love audio for Frank Muller's Eddie Dean is so much. Is it? I, it's the best. Like it's when I think of Dark Tower, I think of Frank Muller being Eddie Dean. Eddie Dean. It's just like it's monumental. It's, it's, it's the shit. I love it. Um, oh yeah. So I thought it was, I thought it was about a, like a drug addict and I'm like, I don't want to read a druggy book. Like some people go like, dude, like read this about like, I'm like, I don't like hippies. Like I don't, I don't want to read about hippies. And You're hating on hippies? hippies? Yes. I have no problem with that. Yeah. I'm hating on hippies. My like, dad was a hippie. Was he really? So was my mom. She moved to California to become a hippie. But nice. I mean, is your dad a hippie now? No. Okay. Then you're fine. Like, and all, obviously your name isn't Moonflower, so I mean, <laughs> came out okay. <laughs> I actually don't think my dad was a hippie. I think that's just propaganda. 
Oh yeah, Spro yeah, exactly, exactly. Sunken his enemies spread that spread those lies. Yes, all of his enemies. And if any if any of y'all are hippies, I mean, it's fine. Like it's, that's okay. Like freaking uh, Mr. and Mrs. Keaton were hippies too, and they still liked you know the families still still love each other. Um, and I still like I like Stephen Keaton and uh, Elise Keaton. I'm talking about Family Ties because it's the only it's the only show that plays on my TV. <laughs> Philip says uh, Moonflower is actually Jimmy's middle name. Oh, I'm sorry. Then. Jimmy Moonflower Nuts. I apologize that I insulted your... <laughs> My namesake, Alan. How dare you? <laughs> how, how dare you, sir? I oh. demand satisfaction. Derry with the checkmate says, Sir Terry Pratchett was a hippie. Okay, so Derry, I can't say what I'm going to say because I, I I literally think that Derry like, will not be my friend anymore. Uh -oh. Um, uh -oh. like, like, <laughs> So it's gotten a little better like ever since I, I saw the... um. Um, I read the scene about it. I don't hate, I don't hate anybody. I just, I mean, well, I don't like hippies and I don't like, I don't like yuppies, which are the opposite of hippies. I don't like them either. Um, but, uh, like I know Pratchett was a hippie. Like he <laughs> freaking sat in his garage and made, and made be kept bees, which is awesome. I love beekeepers, but like made fake beehives, like fake honeycombs that bees would put honey in and oh yeah 100 percent. i'm i'm definitely saying that but the thing is i'm acknowledging that i'm i'm casting i'm casting contempt on hippies um terry like i'm reading this book a lot of times and i'm just like i'm just like can we, like when are we going to get to the part about discworld like i really just want to hear about him writing discworld uh and also he's mean like he's <sighs> when he talks about the signing thing i get it and it kind of like Light, lightened him up a little for me and he's and he's brilliant and you know i'm not i'm not dissing pratchett but i'm just like he's a little mean and the thing that gets me the most and it's just like it's just who pratchett was and you know i'm like he loved his friends and family and all that stuff but like there's a part where someone says does terry ever say thank you and they're like no like he just doesn't say thank you to people and i, I was born and raised in the american south like that's so antithetical hmm. to the existence of people in the south you know what i mean now yeah. most people when they say thank you they're they're just horrid gossips that are going to turn around and talk bad about you behind your back right like oh bless their heart um but like it's just so it's just like why does he not say thank you for things like terry why do you not say thank i don't know um I, it is I, interesting i think to, pressure was on the spectrum right like I think, I think, I think Pratchett had Asperger's. Um, I thought I read that somewhere before he died. Um, it's possible I'm wrong. Anyway, I've got to the part about Discworld and stuff, and now I'm tearing through it. But a lot of it was just like he wrote for a newspaper, small town in Britain. Like, and also he grew up in like I grew up in the American South. He grew up in in small town Britain. Much different during freaking World War II. Like Much completely different. different, you know. Yeah. So I do acknowledge that. But um, but yeah. So hippie. Sorry, Terry. <laughs> Gandalf the Black. Thank you for the seven spot. Uh, says obesity runs in my family. Actually, no one runs in my family. It's a pretty good one. Thank you for the uh, super chat. I appreciate it. Uh, you'll be happy to know, Alan, uh, because I know myself and I know if I don't have a physical copy of a book, I probably won't read it. Um, I ordered the UK hardback for Reaper Man. So I will be continuing Discworld nice, finally cool. after a year or more since I've read Mort. So, oh, heck yeah. That's awesome. I'm just uh, catching up here on the chat. But Alan, you do have some connection to Vermont. And my mom thus have born in Vermont. My mom down. grew up in Vermont. My, they, had a, they had a house in Vermont and they had horses. Like my mom grew up with horses. Um, and so, yeah, I, ugh, dang it, I do. I'm like, I'm 116th hippie. Apparently. Speaking of uh, people from the Northeast, I met Philip's son that he doesn't know exists or something uh, at my work meeting. This guy He's about 27, I think. He looks so much like Philip. It was distracting me. So I finally had to be like, bro, you look just like my friend Philip. And he's like, yeah, people always say that. And I'm like, no, 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 You need to watch this. And I showed him one of Philip's videos. And he was like, oh, my God, that's me. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's you. Because he even does like the things Philip does, like the the point <laughs> and the kind of like when Philip goes to make a point to make Welcome feel to my channel on the best, the best of, of fantasy. fantasy and like even like the grin his mannerisms he talked like Philip. like it was throwing me for a loop and he was like how old is that guy i said he's 50 he goes he looks great i said there, there's your future bro 
So then you're fine. You're going to be a Giga Chad uh, with 20,000 subscribers. I, on like, I like how you say, I know, Philip, 20,000 subscribers. He hasn't quite uh, capped 20,000, and you can tell because he's still talking to us. You think 20 is it? You think yeah, that's I think, what I think 20 is going to be. I think that's like, I think that's what he's waiting for. Um, so he can cut this, uh, <laughs> cut, cut off the dead weight. I like that the guy said, I like, I get that all the time as if. Oh, you could tell he was like annoyed with me. Like he was like, oh, I get it all the time. And then I showed him and he was like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't but, believe it. But it's as if people tell him he looks like Philip all the time. Like, <laughs> they come up, hey, my, like a lot of people are saying, you look like my friend Philip. Philip is a doppelganger. Next time I see him, which will be like, I don't know when six months I'll, I'll take a picture with him if he's, if he's comfortable with it and I'll show everyone I'm talking about. It's insane. Yeah, you definitely should. It's and more so when he talks though. Like he talks just like Philip. I gotcha. Oh, Derry. Yeah, I agree. I find, I find grouchy Terry more lovable now, now that I've, now that I have identified with his pain of the freaking people not being, not being able to sign crap in a bookstore. Like literally he has, there are these, there are these authors that, um, they'll only sign for an hour. They demand like like books can only be – they have to be slid over to them. The books can only be of, of, of four books in height, has mm. to have the, the right, exact right kind of stuff. Terry or Pratchett will sit there for three hours and doesn't ask for anything else except for a comfortable table and chair. That's it. And, the, and it's, it's like it's, – it's literally the bare minimum. It's the bare minimum. So <laughs> I – I completely identified with that. And so now, now I find it less harsh and more, more like, you know what? I get it. I bet you would, I bet he would, I bet he would have a, a, a ranting booktube channel too. He probably would. Uh, we have this uh, person in, in my discord who is getting into Pratchett and loving it. And she said something that I thought was like super interesting and she said that she loves Discworld because she feels like she can just like vacate. I don't think she used these exact words, but I'm paraphrasing that she can like kind of just go drop in on different groups of people in Discworld and just kind of visit like you're visiting Discworld. For so sure. like, I'm going to go see what the sisters are up to. OK, let's go see what the watch is doing. And like you can kind of hop around and just peek in at any time. And it's almost like the world is always going on. And I like I don't know why, but when they explained it like that, I was just like, that is really cool. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, I agree. I agree with that. Thank Philip's still here. Usually Philip's here for like 30 minutes. He uh he draws his accolades from his exactly. uh from his uh his his followers and then uh and then he departs having been refreshed uh for for whatever next nefarious nefarious deeds he gets up to. Yeah, so we do believe at twenty thousand he doesn't talk to us anymore, right? I'm 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 I that is my prediction. At twenty thousand he will uh he will not talk to us anymore. And, See, and if you're not, if you don't have more than 20,000, you're not actually going to get to read his book. Only people I still who are 20. Who, who do what? I still don't have a copy. I mean, I don't either because we don't have 20,000 subscribers. Though you're about to pass 10K and that'll be the last time I'm on this show. Well, that is true. Uh, that's actually in the contract, Alan sub, sub host yeah. contract. Look, I couldn't, I couldn't increase my subs if I freaking tried. Like, I mean, I like I'm posting regular and everything now, and it's just like one, and then like a week later, I now have eight, eight, six, nine, three, and then like three days later, eight, six, nine, four, and then the next day, eight, six, nine, <laughs> one, because I lost three. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I, uh, I don't know. What am I at? Ninety eight hundred or something? I can't. Like not, it, it was ninety eight, ninety eight four last time I saw. It was it was weird this past month. Like it slowed down a lot, and I think it's probably because I didn't post as many book reviews because I've just been busy. Um, but you know it's crazy. So I'm doing bend the knee. I'm a co-host over there for the Song of Ice and Fire podcast. The uh, the YouTube channel over there's a little. It's it's like a medium size for like what we do. Right. Mm -hmm. So it went from 2,500 subs to 5,000 in like three weeks because of house of the dragon. But dude, it's so weird how YouTube and podcasting, like I thought they would be somewhat related because I've never made just a podcast, but the bend the knee podcast that I'm on, dude, it gets like 25,000 downloads a week. And I'm like, like for a podcast, like especially a book type podcast, it's a lot. Um, that isn't sponsored by some big media conglomerate, yeah. right? And it's just like I did not realize there was that big of a discrepancy between like podcast numbers and YouTube because on YouTube we're still growing. Um, 
and still relatively new to YouTube uh, with with that content. <laughs> but it, it, I don't know. It's crazy, dude. Joanna's Joanna's gonna blow up uh, with this read along. And really, <laughs> oh, is that the song of Ice and Fire? She didn't invite me yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't. <laughs> you like that? Yes. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, <laughs> Joanna's Joanna's so nice, and yet she just. She just she has to take all these barbs that we, like all the just the scatter shot that gets thrown across the bow. But I don't know why I literally just said, I don't know. I don't know how to get subscribers. And then as I was thinking about like Joanna's going to blow up with this, I realized I don't read anything anybody reads. So <laughs> It's true. Like, why am I surprised? Like, you want subscribers? Read the freaking Lost Metal, Alan, um, which Patrick says that come the out? table of contents. No, but Patrick got a arc because oh, okay. he's Patrick. Um, and it, he's like the table of contents is a major Cosmere spoiler. Uh, Kyle, Kyle brought that back down a little bit and was like, Cosmere fans say everything's a major spoiler when it's not, but I don't know. Um, hmm. but maybe if I read crap that people wanted to read, um, well, I told you whenever you want to start book two of Mistborn Era two, you just let me know. We'll do it together. Cause we both, uh, we, we read, um, the first one accidentally together. Accidentally at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. We see if we can get the uh, shadows of mid read. Shadows of Mid. It was Mid, wasn't it? I know. I think it was Ben. Uh, he had just finished up Warlord and he was reading Era 2 and he was like, it's fine, but it's just so stupid. <laughs> oh, that's true. I haven't read what it. What are you reading now, now that you finished uh, Company? Dude, I'm, uh, I think... So I got to start fellowship in November, but I'm not going to start that to November one. So I'm in a little fellowship. bit of a, oh, 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 fellowship oh, oh, of the ring. I'm doing, I'm doing Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, like a loose read along one book for the next three months. And then I think we're going to do the Cimmerillion as well, because I really want to try it out. Um, so I'm kind of in a weird spot. I read actually one more book than I had planned to this month. Cause I had the plane ride. So, so 12 instead of 11. No, I no. read like five again. It's only five. I'm nothing. If not consistent, Jimmy. It's true. It just is like true. it's one of the things I like, admire about you. Curran saying Alan's slandering everybody. It's like I'm an equal opportunity slanderer. Yeah, he, everyone's getting it. Like, <laughs> no one, no one is safe. <laughs> I uh, I have like these next what the thirty first, but I have so much content in the next few days that I don't think I'm gonna have time to read. So what I do in this scenario, I'm just gonna blitz through manga. I gotta get caught up on Monster because I'm reading it with um Sarah, and I'm way behind. So I'll probably read the next Vinland Saga book, which is book six. And then I got to read the next Berserk volume for dudes talking. I don't even know when we're going to do that next week. Maybe. I don't know. I got too much stuff going on, man. You don't have time. I, I would say I am getting tight on time. Very uh, much okay, so. okay. You're not, you're not out yet. It's just getting tight. You know, I had people trying to schedule. I took Monday off of work and I had people trying to schedule uh, a meeting today. And I was like, Nope, denied, denied. Like, nice it's a it's, uh, it's not bad i mean it's all good problems what are you reading right now uh i'm reading that uh this this book that i was talking about it's called okay. whoops yellow sky revolt and it's a it is thick cover yeah yeah it's uh so it starts with the war of the yellow turbans which is always the first battle you fight in dinosaurs it's always the first one and i'm like yes um and just seeing characters' names that you know I've known for years from the from the the games and then the history. Like if games came first and then the history. That's like like people that trash video games. Like I would never have been exposed to this if I had not played those video games. And it's now awesome. I love this history. So uh, it is it is really awesome. And it's going to be a ten book series. The hilarious thing that like Kyle watched the he watched the same uh, interview with him and realized like Kyle was like it. The guy is writing the exact same series that Kyle was writing. The same character, which is not one of the main characters. He's a side character. Same main character, same starting place. Both, both of them wanted to write 10 books on it. Like, I was like, that is bizarre, Kyle. So it's very cool. Um, yeah. And the guy's super nice. The guy's super nice. And I'm, I'm enjoying the heck out of it because, like, you know, it's, it's very detailed about, like, what, like what, was it, what it was like to be a, you know, Chinese peasant and the third century ad um but like i love the history i know where it's going so uh i like it a lot well a book that we're both you know we're talking about history we're both going to try to read augustus this month by john williams right with evie? yes yes I, yes i bullied evie into stopping reading it evie jumped the evie evie's like you and kyle where like she she'll she'll like buddy read like you'll plan the buddy read for like next month and evie's like 
I'm reading it now. Oh, you it's mean like every time I try to buddy read with uh, people in my Discord, and then they always just started like a month early? Like I saw like four people yeah. reading Fellowship yes. in October. I'm like, Timmy, what's wrong with everybody? Why? What's they wrong with us. everybody? They clear uh, we are being discriminated against, and everyone hates us. I know, I know. That's what it is. Someone's going to share this. Um, it, it's like a Robin Hood cover. Looks kind of cool. I like I like the. Uh... The contrast of the green with the with with all the gray. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Gandalf the Black, thank you for the three spot. And yeah, he said check out this series. Um, I've never heard of this before, but is all the a, covers is it a really Robin cool. Hood retelling or like a like a it, based on. I, I I'm thinking yes. Um, all the covers are like that gray with a color accent. So one's red, one's blue, and one's green. It's kind of sick. Actually. <laughs> yes, Evie. Evie used the caps exactly as you're supposed to use them. That's the exact way that I use them. You are you need you you need to yell out your reply because someone has said something that must be refuted. Yeah, that, that's the perfect oh, use of caps. Phillips reading Touch of Light. Excellent. He was supposed to read it in September. <laughs> you have a calendar. Hey, I don't know if you should be the one. <laughs> no, I watched his um. I watched his uh his uh week and uh the week that week was was. Thank you. Yes. Um. Uh. And Philip, I've been trying to get Philip to read more Discworld. You know what Philip does? He reads more Discworld. And then, like, I can never join any of the read-alongs, right? Because y'all all want to read your 9,000-page philosophical t treatises. And <laughs> I don't have time. And so the one thing the one thing Philip reads that I can read with him is Discworld. And he ditches me. You know what he ditched me for? His dad. I mean, that's, that's unreasonable. That seems, that seems pretty reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's like the one thing, the one thing that I can talk to Philip about. Like, he replaces me. Like, it's with his dad, so I get it. But it's like... He pulled the Trump card on. He's like the dad card. You can't. I know. Like, I, like I can't be like, why are you reading with your dad, Philip? Like, I can't do that. <laughs> People are hyped about Augustus. Um, if if I have a if I have a, a, a discussion about it, Jimmy, you're you are you've heard it here first. You you can be on the the discussion. So let's whoever go. I put on it, it, you will be one of them. Um, so I'm excited about. It. I'm actually really excited about it too. So I'm reading. I'm going to finish this. This will take me through November. Augustus is going to be the next book I read. Nice. Um, so I got to finish this. I'm on page 100. It's 400. So I'm 25% through. I'm not going to have a ton of time to read this weekend because, like I said, I'm out of town yeah. uh, tomorrow and Sunday. But I will definitely um, I will definitely get it done. And then then I'll let you know where to read. Well, actually, I'll, uh, I'll let you know two days after I start Augustus. Um, that I've started it. I'm probably going to do it on audio because so the only books I'm pledged for this month are my patron pick, whichever, whatever that might be. And then uh, Augustus and then fellowship and fellowship. Of the rings. I'm going to do it on audio book. Cause it's like the 80th time I've read it. So I three books, I was thinking about trying to start black company or long, long price. But the problem is, is since I'm doing that Patreon uh, 2000 pages in December, I don't want to start anything. Cause like, I also need to read the second book in the ash and sand trilogy by Richard. Now I finished Kings of paradise. It was a Patreon pick and I want to continue it because it's a trilogy and it, yeah. I liked book one. Um, um, yeah. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I think you're going to like black company. Um, uh, long price quartet. If you, like this, it's twelve hundred pages total. Like if, even yeah. if you like book one, keep going. Like I, I don't know. Like some people say they've tried book one and then they tried book two and didn't like it, so they stopped it. I don't know how anybody could read the third book and not like it and not like it. I mean, I, it is possible, anything possible, but that's just not something I could understand. Like I can't understand it because uh, the third book, the third and fourth book are such. It's like they're like one and two for me they're here but then like three and four they just they just jump um do you have the physical copy of augustus i do yeah okay good I, that'll help like there's a lot of names and there's a lot of like you know uh so i know with all maybe those, i'll eyeball it then yeah I, i'm i'm gonna have um even like i might do both like i might listen to it when i'm driving and uh mm -hmm. when i'm able to read read it but uh, i would have trouble with all the names yeah, I, I, if you would, then I would. Yeah, it's just, it's just a lot of similar sounding names. I think for me also, I, I kind of want to do the audiobook because I really like the narrator for um, Stoner. Is and it it's the same, the same guy? guy? It's the same guy, yeah. Dang it, now I'm definitely going to listen to it. In the it he was he good, was, right? Like, he was good, I liked it. I wonder if he'll be good in like this setting though because like he did the you know, the teacher and like the nerdy, uh, what, what was the kid's name? 
the one that Charlie she, Walker, Mr. Char Stoner. Yes, Mr. Stoner. I don't have my paper in. And yeah. he hit that I, voice. I believe I told you that uh, uh, I, I I had the thing almost completed last week. If you will just give me a second. <laughs> oh, very clever, Mr. Stoner. You're trying to catch me. Dude, right. That is your voice is exactly what it sounds. If, if y'all have listened to it, it does sound exactly like that. I will take credit for that one. It does sound exactly like that. Dude, okay. you need to be an audiobook narrator, man. I am actually like, okay, remember I told you I I am very I am like a glacier. I am very slow to make any kind of changes in my life because it makes me uncomfortable because I like routine. I like how everything is. Um, yes, everybody is called Marcus, but the problem is they don't all go by Marcus. Um, those, <laughs> oh, no. Like the Romans only had like 20 first names, but only your friends and only like your really best buddies and your, um, and your family would call you that. So like no one walked around calling Caesar Gaius, like only his mama called him Gaius. Like they called him Julius or probably Caesar. Um, anyway, uh, where was I? What you was were, I you were talking about audio. Oh yeah. 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 So I'm so slow because things like new endeavors make me uncomfortable. But like when I had, when the release of touch of light audiobook, I had a conversation with, um, uh, Chiago and uh, Kevin Kemp, the narrator for mm -hmm. Touch of Light, and he's fantastic. Um, he did a sample. He did a, a like on air sample. It was so good. Um, and I was like, dude, like, and he said he would he would talk to me about like how he got into it and everything. I just haven't pulled the trigger because that's different, and different for me is frightening. So I, I have to like slowly acclimate to it. I mean, you also did do the Gerfordid impression. From Warlord, <laughs> I, I don't even know how to say that name. Gorf I mean, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> how is that Gorfithid? I, Philip, I, can you explain to us how that is pronounced Gorfithid? I, how? I how is that, that pronounced that way? Gorfithid. I haven't because there's too many of them. There's so many. But, I have no idea where to start. But if I started them, I would read the ones narrated by Jonathan Keeble. Oh, here's a good question. Does Alan have any favorite narrators? Farley has to be up there, right? Who's Farley? The stoner guy? Chris Farley. The I dead comedian. Chris, I hate Chris Farley. How de he's dead, Alan. He's down by the river! He, he's he's dead, and you're hating on him. Well, people... people so? Hitler's <laughs> dead, too. Are you not going to hate on him? Like, well, are you comparing Chris Farley to Hitler? Only in state of livingness... <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> putting them both in the dead basket. Look, That's I crazy. have been watching on Netflix how to become a tyrant, uh, and that? I am almost completed my hey, master's course. How to become so, a tyrant? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's the rules for being a tyrant or something like that. Just search tyrant on Netflix. I know uh, how to become a tyrant. Oh, this looks right up my alley. It's it's so interesting. It's yeah, so this looks fun. Right my alley. It is really good. Um, so I've been watching that uh, when I'm like while I'm doing crossword puzzles. Uh, but how do you on. do both? What? How do you do both? How do you watch TV while doing crossword puzzles? I don't like. I really don't like doing one thing at a time. I like doing multiple things. And crossword puzzles. They, I mean, you know, they they take some time. But like, and I I really I really. Philip Chase just said, "Gotta go." Just hit twenty k. Actually, dot, I'm dot, dot, grinning face, and now he pieces out with that. <laughs> he says it's what past my bedtime, and he's sick. What a Chad! What an absolute unit. <laughs> Bye, Philip. Philip is such a good sport. We rag on Philip every time we do this. Yeah, in reality, he'll just stop talking to us because we're mean, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then we'll double down. <laughs> That we'll we'll use that as proof. Uh, we'll just uh, we... <laughs> oh yeah, your impression of uh, Griffith it, 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 um, was tremendous. One of my favorite booktube moments of all time. <laughs> I was that's cackling. Not, yeah, that's not something that I do uh, that I can just do from like scratch. I built to that. Uh, that just came out of like <laughs> out of the build. Uh, I don't know anything about these names. I, mean, I know nothing. Um, 
Evie said we have a self fulfilling prophecy when it comes we to do. Philip. I think that's we do. Oh yes, I do like Rupert. I do like Rupert Farley with the sharp books. Um, back to Ben's question. Um, mm -hmm. Simon Vance. Simon Vance is the only reason I did not one star. Uh, Emperor's Blades by Brian Staple. Oh, I thought you said Tagana. I was like, oof. No, Simon Vance was the reason I was able to finish Tagana because I had read 350 pages of the bloody thing. It is narrated by Peter Dinklage. Nice. Um, but in an... Is Peter Dinklage American or, or, or British? He's American. Okay, okay. So he's just being British for Game of Thrones. Yes, okay, correct. Okay. Or uh, West Grossi, if we're being technical. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> Look, I actually didn't made yes race earlier, so you're. you're you yeah, you did. One. Um. Yes, I I I couldn't remember if it was it was British. I didn't know if he was British doing an American accent for this documentary, or if he was American doing a British accent for um. Sorry, a Westerosi accent for uh um. Game of Thrones. Look, Joanna can't even stay around a chat of Philip, isn't it? You know why? You know, you know why she's leaving? Because Philip left. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She's going to join a chat with him and AP right now. I mean, I'm just, I, I'm just. Joanna, that was that's too. That's that's too convenient. That's too convenient. Oh, Fool man. us once, shame on us. That's right. Fool us twice. Tell him, Alan. Tell him. That's right. Shame on us again. We're making our own cool kid club over here, right? right. Like it's it's me and you. That's right. On, the, on this show every other week. <laughs> so, oh, so yeah. So Simon Vance, um, because like I was just having a real problem, like committing to reading another 350 pages of Tagana, like to catch up. So I forgot everything that happened in six months. So I used Simon Vance and it was great. And so then once I got to where I was, uh, then I was able to read it. And I just tore through it. And so yeah. him, Jonathan Keeble, Rupert Farley, Simon Vance, those are my top ones so far. Now, I haven't listened to a ton other ones. Yeah. So I really want you to reread Dark Tower now. Heck yeah. Like if I reread them, I'm going to definitely going to listen to them. I have not read, I have not read Dark Tower. That's not true. The last time I read the series was when Dark Tower came out. Um, but then I read one books one, two, and I got like partway through Wastelands like in 2015, and I haven't read them since then. I will um, say, uh, um, speaking of king and narrators, I thought Weber for it was really good. I I really enjoyed his performance. Oh, really? Yeah, man, that book is like it's actually, uh, in my opinion, it's a little tougher on audio because there is some just depraved stuff in it, um, just from the language, the racism. Had I mean, you read it before? Uh, so I tried to read when I was like eleven back in the day, and I got scared. So yeah, I've told the story a bunch of times on here, so people are probably bingoing that. But um, so. There's one scene in it that everybody's just like, why is that there? I feels it's, like it's, it's something. It's like when everyone like rags on tyrants or traitors blade. There's one scene that's just like, why is this here? Like, why yeah. is this here? It's the same thing with it. It's like, what? Why is that? That's so weird. I it, I it it's know. bizarre. I saw someone explain it. Um I mean, okay. I maybe, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm not <laughs> saying anything about it. It's just, it's just like I don't even know what what you can say. Yeah, um, I, like I like I mean, I would love to hear the explanation because I don't understand it. But you know, it's supposed to be like a transcension to like adulthood. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So it's a metaphor. I don't know. <laughs> it can only <laughs> it be a metaphor. It happens. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it really happened. Like. Can't you do the metaphor without that? <laughs> Look at this chaos. AP says to disprove the theory, I only show up when Philip and John Dang it. Leave. Dang it. AP what has now been absolved of the conspiracy. What a Chad. It's also like, I don't know, 5 a.m. for <laughs> AP right now. How, AP, why are you up? Uh, AP AP's a wild man. Someone's got to edit these books. I mean, that's true. Someone's got to edit out the holding a breath I didn't or letting go of breath I didn't know I was holding. Someone's got to edit that shit out. I would, I would, I would be surprised if the manuscripts that come across AP's desk have that phrase in there. I oh. think you'd be shocked. Really? Yeah, dude. I mean, there's some books that are like, blown. wait, what book was it recently that I was reading and I was like, damn, this is good. Oh, Ken Liu did it. Ken Liu did it in like book four. I was like, no. what are you doing? No. Nothing How could so. you? I, hold on. Like, I don't hate. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. Hope you feel better, buddy. Yeah. 
I, I wouldn't hate Peter Dinklage because he's a stoner. Like that, I just said I don't want to read about like uh, druggies. Like stoner. that's not what I choose to 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 like like I don't know engage in in my media. Like if like I'm sure Peter Dinklage is delightful. Like as long as he's not wearing like a flower crown and <laughs> bell bottoms and those freaking <laughs> tiny circle glasses that have like. <laughs> A blue lenses or whatever. in a Volkswagen van ready to yes. get chopped up by Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw with, Massacre with freaking flowers painted on the side and a black light, then we're fine. Like, we're fine. Uh, <laughs> well, we got a five spot from Darren. Darren, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. He said, Thoughts on Ruka so far, Jimmy and Alan? Have you read Kings of Paradise? So, I finished Kings of Paradise, Darren, and uh, Ruka is one of the most interesting characters I've ever read about. Um, and in some ways overshadows the rest of the book. Um, but I really enjoy Kings of Paradise and I'm going to continue the Ash and Sand trilogy. Uh, I don't know when I will get to book two. I'd like to try to finish it this year. That'd be sick. Um, Are there three books or just two? There's three. There's three. And I think he wrote some short stories or novellas in the world as well. Um, I don't know if you would like it. I, I would mean, be curious if you would it like just it. It depends. Like, Luca is very, very interesting. Like it's a character that jumps off the page. Like it's intense. I mean, I mean, yeah, like it really. So I don't, I don't mind dark stuff. My problem is, like we talked about before, there's just some, there's some hidden meter. It's like, it's like the hidden algorithm when you're playing a video game, and like there's mm -hmm. no actual way you can tell, like they're, you're, you're, like you're hitting it, but like not, the, the, the special thing's not going to pop till you meet certain conditions. It's, it's like that. Like there's just a certain algorithm that computes inside <laughs> freaking hex that's in my head, um, <laughs> which is the disc world computer. And uh, that like, it can't tip over into the Vegas signposts that have big neon arrows pointing saying, Oh, dark, dark and edgy, dark and edgy, dark and edgy. Like, like once that happens, then I'm then I'm out of it. Like I because then it's just like I can see the author's big meaty hand, like with his big quill pen sketching across the thing. But well, what about death of the author, Alan? What? What about death of the author? If they want death of the author. Stop putting neon signs that that like you know have you standing there holding them. Speaking mm -hmm. of Vegas, how's the food there? Oh, fantastic. I'm going again in February. <laughs> You go to Vegas too much. I go four times a year. Why don't you move to Vegas? Uh, well, one, um, it, uh, good point. Uh, two, uh, <laughs> school systems aren't great. Uh, they're pretty bad. And then three, right now would be a bad time because uh, their real estate market is exploding. Oh, I can't. I can't even imagine. Ooh, someone said, Jimmy, do you think Alan will like first law? Yep. And he'll never read it because of that. It's not true. It actually was chosen for me on my patron wheel. So yeah, like five it, months ago. No, this month. I was supposed to read it this month. So did you? Um, no. But oh, I, I, I told everybody I wasn't going to. I didn't say I'm going to read it. I said, okay, I'm not going to read this because I'm backed up. But, 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 everyone has told me that it is an acceptable fantasy to be listened to on audio, and the fact that I can listen to it on audio sharply increases its chances of being read by me which yeah the audio is the audio is terrific yeah um i don't like to listen to fantasy on audio on first go because i'm afraid i'm gonna miss a bunch of stuff but people have told me that it's okay so i could I'm, i could see you really liking verse law actually i'm hoping so the if, problem if anything is, it's gonna give you content <laughs> like you're gonna want to talk about see, it yeah see that that'll get me that'll that'll blow me wait no it's not actually it's not going to blow me up. Dang it. Like, no, first of all, it's not, not that popular. I mean, it's popular to talk about, but it, it doesn't do yeah. like, it doesn't do like the Sando numbers, mm -hmm. you know, lost metal. We got to get, we got to get on it. Oh, uh, Jeremiah says, do you guys read multiple books? Of if so, how many do you have going at a time? Usually I've had one time I was reading like four books at once. That was way too many. Um, I usually have about two. I would say I have two books going one on audio, one on physical. Usually. What about you, Alan? Um, one. I don't know where I would find the time to read more than one. And so that's not true. I have one. I'm always listening to one on audio. So I always have one going in my car and then one um, here, mostly because uh, I don't like buying the same book twice. So fair. 
so that's why I don't like I now a lot sometimes like on a reread. So I've already read the book. I already own the book. This is me reading it again. So then I will purchase it like on Audible um, or when I'm just like I'm having trouble getting through the book and I want to finish it, then I'll buy it. But I, I tend not to start it uh, that way. Um, now, I will get the audio for First Law, even though I have um, Blade itself. But it's uh, but generally I have one going one going one um, one going in the car and one going now. So currently I'm listening to Terry Pratchett's autobiography in the car um, and I'm reading this uh, Han. Uh, what did I break? Oh, 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 I didn't I didn't break the wheel. I just I just I, I just changed it to where I pick a uh, it picks a patron instead of instead of a book. Um, and then in, in an effort to re, to like read them better, like a patron can then submit three books of, for me to choose from hope, mm. hoping that if like I'm picking which one, like it's one that I would want. To right. You're more. not going to DNF. Correct. So I'm having, I'm just having difficulty getting to it. Um, January may be for me, like in January, I may literally just read um, Shogun like, or parts of shogun slowly because i i ain't reading that 12 that is massive. but it's mmpb and i've read it before um uh i've read it twice so uh but i may literally just read patron reads in january um yeah that's what i'm doing in december because like you know it's random like someone could be on the board for two years and um i thought about doing like the oldest but there are so many people who have been on there for the yeah. same amount of time that it would be like yeah. 12 books so i'm just gonna try to do 2000 pages give yeah. back what I can. I wish, I wish I had more, um, more bandwidth. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and the thing is my patrons are really nice. I mean, they want me to read stuff that I want to read. Like Charmaine yeah. says the patron wheel means nothing. And she's not, she's not wrong completely, but it's not, that's not completely untrue. It, it, it keeps them like here. Like it keeps them in my, in my cognizance, mm -hmm. knowing that I have to do it. So I am more likely to read those books, especially if they were books that I wasn't really planning on picking up on my own. I'm definitely going to read them before those other books on the wheel because yes. um, just because of that. Well, um, I and, also just pick off stuff off the board. Like if I have time, I'm like, oh, that's been on there a while. Liza Lacamora. Like, let's just yeah. read it, you know? So it's kind of fun, right? It makes it a little easy, easy. Bye, um, Omar says, random question. But has Alan watched Deadwood? He strikes me as a guy who's seen Deadwood. I don't know why. I can guarantee you Alan has not seen Deadwood. If I had seen Deadwood, if I watched Deadwood, there was a time that I wanted to watch Deadwood. I love it. But I did not have HBO at the time. Um, and uh, I give you my login or whatever. I wanted to watch Deadwood. Now I, I won't watch Deadwood. There's way too much language in it for me. Like Ooh, I, there is like, way too much. And it's not. And you know what? Like, and it's fine. If, if that if that doesn't bother people like I. Like, I just, I just, I can't, like, I just can't anymore. Back when I, you know, back, like there, there was a time that, that, that it didn't bother me the way it bothers me now. Um, but there was also a time where I thought, uh, I thought an F-bomb was an appropriate adjective for l literally every single situation. Like I used, I used to swear all the time. I like, swear all the time. Like, I, I believe that like, like, but you don't, but like, you don't, you don't swear on the air a ton. Like no. you do, but you're, you're not like sitting here. Yours isn't one of these channels where like, I try to hold it back a little bit. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like I would not like, you know, because you know how right now I'm like, I'm like, this is my channel. Like I'm, here's a history video. 300 people watch it. Don't care. Part two's coming out next week. Don't care. Like I don't care. And I'll sit here and be like, you know, I hate hippies in their, and their flower vans. Like I would have, that's, that's the channel I would have been. And be like, Hey, this is the channel where all the F-bombs are dropped. Um, so I wouldn't have had your restraint, uh, again, autism or whatever. Uh, but now like, I just, I just, I just don't anymore. Like people it's, it's to where like, uh, the, um, like people will, will like the, the author, uh, Aaron Evans that I interviewed last night, she, she draw, she, you know, she, swore at one point she's like oh sorry like can i do that here i didn't i forgot to ask i'm like i don't i don't, I don't care what you do like this, this doesn't bother me you know like and i'm i'm not your boss so you know do what you want but for stuff that i watch i just it's just it's just jarring to me and it's not that i don't i don't I, like i don't mind profanity in books but if it happens so often that i am taken out of what i'm doing it's uh it's it's distracting. This was one of the problems with the later Poppy War books. Like, like there was swearing in the Poppy War, and no, then there was more in Dragon Republic, and then in Burning God, it was just like 
it was like RF Kwong couldn't think of any other dialogue. And so she's just like, <laughs> you know what? What if we just drop an F bomb here? Brother, you better be careful. Why? The Kwongers are going to get you. Oh, the Yas Queeners can come if they need. That's fine. Like, I've already talked bad about Burning God, and they can like it. It's fine. I've okay. definitely heard Jimmy swear. It doesn't bother I me. Swore the, I swore this podcast. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. Um, I, swear, I swear a lot. I, Jimmy and I have hung out in real life. It swears. It doesn't bother me. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me what other people do. It's just what I do. So I couldn't watch it now. Um, I do think uh, swears can be overused, though. It's actually one of the that, things that I'm saying. a little nervous about with, like, uh, Jay Kristoff, because like I'm actually willing to give Jay Kristoff a complete fair chance. Like a lot of people just kind of write him off, which is fine. But for me, like there's enough stuff I know about it that I'm like, like specifically the Nevernight trilogy, that I'm like, I could see that being goofy enough to where it would work for me. But I, I have heard that he uses like I think the F word used like 480 times in Empire of the Vampire. It's just not my. Thing. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah, it's just not my thing, and and it's okay if if other people are fine with it. It's just not my thing. Um. And, and again, like if I write something, like people swear. I understand that people swear. Like if I am writing something, writing dialogue, like even though I don't really, I, like I don't, I don't swear. That doesn't mean I wouldn't write someone swearing. You know what I mean? Because sometimes, people, sometimes people talk. I, but I wish I, that you would swear because you would do it really well. I did do it really well. Yeah, I was I, king, I, I, dude. It would be awesome. King. Like one day you just gotta drop it. Like Brian McClellan, I'm sick sometimes, of this shit. There are clips. <laughs> there are clips. Of me, I'm ranting to the I'm ranting to my 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 players about D because my D and D players are accusing me of something that I that I did back in like when I ran their game in college, and they show it to me and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is me. That is how I used to talk. I'm just like I'm just like yeah. And then effing Finlay comes in and shoots the fireball and steals everyone's effing experience. So don't talk to me about this, you effing morons. F you. And I'm like, <laughs> I would love to see it. The person who has it will never show it to anybody. That's um, kind of them. Because I'm like, because really the thing that like, I don't want, I don't want my, my students to, to find stuff of me carrying on and stuff like that yeah um, no and that's fair right there there is an image as as a teacher i mean that that makes sense to me uh matt from super games versus chatting with nuts and alan is peak chatting with nuts i mean i would agree with that thank you 100 percent. a critical dragon mr ap himself says what is interesting is when historically accurate swearing doesn't register as swearing for instance the line in the avengers Muling Quim is yes. really egregious. What did that, I just say? Did I say that something? Is such a fan, a fantastic uh, point about like swears that were other. So I substitute. So I substitute. I say, I say bleeding all the time. I say, and the freaking the bloody the bloody UPS mm -hmm. guy. Like I say that all the time. That is old timey swearing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so yeah. Yeah, I mean, swearing in itself is like so tied to the culture and the population that it exists within. Um, you know, there are words that I say sometimes when I say them in different groups of people, even, um, you know, like West Coast to East Coast stuff. Uh, they just kind of like their eyebrows shoot up and you're like, I had no idea. For instance, calling someone Chad, like saying someone's a Chad is generally an insult on the Internet, whereas I use it as a term of endearment. Like, I love calling people Chads. Like, if I, I call you a Chad. I love I you. It's come back around because my students now use it as a positive too. Like when, when like Philip of Macedon does something awesome, they'll be like, oh, dude, Philip's such a Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Anitha says swearing in Emperor's Blades is worse. I would just say Emperor's Blades is the worst. Like you could have just cut now, off the. Now, I, I think on Ceteris Paribus, all things being equal. I think I would rather someone just, if they're going to swear, like in a book, either use like, like mule and quam or whatever, or bloody or whatever, use like a, like an old timey swear mm -hmm. rather than a, like a fake in world swear, because like, I hate, I hate the ones in powder mage. Like I yeah. hate them. Like the fake ones, like, and I know I'm not going to like, Oh, you storming idiot or whatever. And I'm like, you might love it. You don't know. No, I won't. Cause it's cause, because the problem is, so the problem is they are used identically to the words that we use, like identically. 
That's my problem with the ones in Powder Mage. It's like, you go to go to the pit. Well, pit is hell. Like, <laughs> like you're, you're saying the exact same thing. Like, the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, anyway. So you feel like it doesn't need to exist, right? I mean, no. Like, if you're going to use it identically, like, and you're not using a word that, like, meant that before, you know what I mean? Or had, like, a same, like, making it up, it's just... It's just weird. Hey, yeah. Meritrix, don't. Meritrix, Meritrix is prostitute. Meritrix is, is Latin for prostitute. Go swive a Meritrix? I mean, okay, well, you just said something about a hooker. Well, hey, uh, well, I'm pro-hooker here. Not for myself, but for anyone who chooses. Why not? <laughs> not my life. <laughs> we are a... We are a... Uh, we are a pro seamstresses guilds we are pro independent contractors 1099ers here at the fantasy network <laughs> oh man yeah see kyle said it was so weird joining discords and people using chat as a positive word i've only heard it negative yeah like especially with the people who hang around in my community like chat is like a staple of it it's, i don't know why it just kind of became that thing um a lady of negotiable virtue <laughs> Yes, I've heard. I've heard "Lady of Negotiable Affection," but I like "Negotiable Virtue." That's solid. Um, ah. but yeah, I mean, like people, people can write however they want. Like, like, like I'm not the police, you know. Um, yeah. I'm not. I'm not the Roman censor. I don't. I don't like. I'm not the one that uh, decides I mean, the moral morality laws of Rome. Well, um, one thing I kind of like about you is is uh, like KJ Parker obviously swears in his writing, but even more so than that, like. Uh, it's, from what I know, KJ Parker is not a huge fan of organized religion. Like, it doesn't seem like he's real into it, right? Um, and you're religious, but you, you can get still that from the company. No, from you. Oh, from I've heard me? you talk about, yeah, because in your wrap up, you were like, "We get it, KJ." Like, Dude, you don't. Like every it. one of his novellas, it's like oh, I hate. It's like I know, I I know. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> but like, you know, that's an opposing view for you. But like, you read it, and sure. and you know what I mean. Like, a lot of people can't do that. Here's the thing. If if my own if my own like like religious faith was shaken right. by a fiction author, then I I didn't. <laughs> it wasn't a very strong faith to start with, right? Like <laughs> like that's like people think that questioning religion means that that you don't like that you oh you don't have any faith, so you're like questioning means you got to abandon. All. No, like like. People question stuff all the time. There's a radio host with Asperger's who is on like Christian radio named Brian Hansen. I love him so much because he acts, he's like, every time he talks about his childhood stuff, he does. I'm like, we are brothers. And he's like, I'm one of the most skeptical people that I, that, that exist. Like I, I ask why all the time and questions all the time, all the time. Like, but you know, that's what, I mean, that's why it's faith. So it doesn't, it doesn't, no, it doesn't bother me. Like it doesn't bother me. And it doesn't bother me when people aren't uh, religious. I have church friends. I have friends who are religious and don't go to church. And you I have friends like who me. Are other religions. I have friends who are. I have friends who are um, who are uh, agnostic. I have friends who are atheists. I don't really have friends who are militant atheists because I don't really like militant anybody. Like I don't like people who are so like. Well, the word atheist has been hijacked a bit too. Well, one hundred percent. And also, I think it takes a whole lot of faith to be an atheist. Like to believe in like. You know what? Nothing. Yeah. I'm like, okay, like that's fine. You believe in something. You just don't believe in God. You just believe in nothing. And it's fine. Like it doesn't like none of it bothers me. It doesn't bother me what other people do. I don't know why it would. Yeah. I, so, I mean, I find myself on the atheistic side of things, sure. and, um, but I grew up. Go. Very no, I gotta go. I hate you now. Oh man. Like, we were just getting sense? along so well. Al. It, doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. <sighs> um, I, I grew up very religious though. Um, like very, very religious was going to be a youth pastor at one point, believe it or not. That Dude, was like my thing. I'm not going to lie. You would have been, you would have been the, the giga chattest. I would have rocked pastors. it. Cause you'd had, you'd had your skinny jeans. You'd had your old, like the hair I would have had highlights hair. with the faux hawk. Dude. And Raceless. Like, guys, we're going to gather guys. You got to come, you got to come to the rally. Like there's going to be pizza. We're going to have games. We're going to have cornhole guys. It's going to be like, it'd be <laughs> I would have been great at it. That would have been fantastic. <laughs> and then I went to pro wrestling instead. 
<laughs> whatever. The thing is, Same. I I also grew up religious, and when I was set, when I was in middle school, I decided I didn't want to be anymore because I did not like the people at the church. I thought they were mean. I thought they were hypocritical, and uh, and that they were rude. And to this day, to this day, I go to church. I'm a Christian. Some of the meanest people I know are Christians. That's 100 percent true. Yeah. But but I I just I just learn to I just I separate like yeah like for me these these awful people that's not God like that's just that's just people being awful like people are awful no matter where like there are mean atheists too you know like everybody's freaking mean there's mean people yeah. bloody everywhere so so I did like I I walked away from religion for from when I was 13 till I was 30 so for you know, 17 years. And, uh, and now it's, now it's completely different. Part of it is that it's my choice this time. Like, you know, my That's parents big. didn't make me go and, you know, and all that stuff. So anyway, this, this got into a weird place, but yeah, it sure did. Didn't it? I mean, <laughs> That's what we do. I hope, like, I hope you're not uncomfortable. I'm not uncomfortable. No, like we're, we're, Dude, uh, I, I've already I've known like, this about you. Yeah. Yeah. I've already known this about you. And I, uh, I, I will say as someone who does not uh, believe, I would say that you are someone that is a good representative. Like I would get, Jimmy, I, would... I appreciate that, buddy. Like I do, I really yeah. do. Um, because I like one of the things Christine will tell you. One of the things that I rail about the most, not here, because I don't, I don't talk about this on on um, uh, the channel a lot, and that I, and I also, I don't want to get political. Mark your bingo card. One of the things that makes me the angriest is the co opting and weapon, weaponizing of well, certainly. my belief system. Like because. Those bloody people, they don't believe a dang word of what they're freaking saying. Not a word, but they're using it because they know that there are th that there are peasants who mm. do. Or if you just say this, that all of a sudden, that if you say this, it's just a trigger word that everyone's now going to vote for you because you said you're a Christian. I'm sorry. Like, okay, guess what, Jimmy? I am now a pencil sharpener. It's a nice pencil sharpener. No. I am a pencil sharpener. I am. I am actually. I am actually someone who makes pencil sharpeners. I can construct one from scratch because I'm holding one, and that must make me someone who is an expert on pencil sharpeners, right? Right. So if I hold up a Bible, that must mean that I'm a Christian, right? Mm. Get out of here with that nonsense. I hate. And it. and it also extends even past religion, right? I mean, anyone will use any semblance of a gathering or a power yeah. organization for it's enraging. And the thing is, and the thing is, and what ticks me off is when those people come out because they're cheating on their bloody wives or they're talking about how much they hate homosexuals. And then it comes out like, Oh, I had 12 gay orgies yesterday. All it does is it makes the entire, the, it makes the entire group look like horrible people Yeah, because these loud, obnoxious, douchebags who care about nothing but money and power mm -hmm. it's infuriating and i and i don't understand how people who believe can can I, support people doing that i wholeheartedly agree with you so sorry i that's that is not a that is not a rant i wanted to handle on the internet but <laughs> i i i understand it, need, it, 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 it needs to be said man like it just makes me so freaking mad <laughs> oh so once your pencil sharpener you know what i can make you one <laughs> if he says 12 orgies that's ex excessive seven is the acceptable <laughs> decent <cost. laughs> i don't know not if you're in like not if you're in like one of the bakai um uh, books of bangs con says post rome britain was so cool with so many competing religions and gods and seeing how polytheists didn't rule out the existence of everyone else's gods i mean the druids are fascinating right like one of the coolest things in freaking Cyrus and the Persians. So Cyrus, uh, Cyrus the Great is in the Bible, in the book of um, Ezekiel. Um, and not Ezekiel, sorry. Ezra, Ezra, Ezra. And uh, like they, like the, the Cyrus says to the Jews, he's like, wow, your God is powerful. Like you guys go ahead, you go free. Here's money, go rebuild Jerusalem. So they acknowledge, they're like, they're like, your God is powerful. Like they're acknowledging the God of the Jews alongside uh Vashta Narada, that's from Doctor Who. Um, Ahriman and Ahura Mazda, Ahura Mazda. Um, so yeah, that's that goes along with what Ben is saying. Yeah, I, I, I find uh, actually Warlord goes into like 
a ton of this, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's I, yeah. I really like the 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 clash of um the early Christians, of whom Samson is an awful, awful example. Uh Samson is a modern day politician who'd be doing that that same that same dang thing. Um he's declared he's not declared the Messiah, but he's declared the one that there will come someone who who uh sends the Jews home after 70 years of captivity um in Isaiah. Uh but he's not proclaimed as the Messiah, capital M. Um yeah. Who are you talking to? Oh, Leslie. Okay, sorry, Christina. I didn't know she was like talking to me, but she's she's talking to her friend on the phone. Um, Derry, stay safe. She's signing off for a storm. Hopefully, everything. Oh okay. my goodness. Hopefully, everything's okay. Well, I think uh, I have to wrap this one up. You have to I, go. I have to go. I I oh, I need what? to spend. It's nine o'clock. I need to spend some time with my wife. I've been away all. Bring week. her on the chain. Bring her on. She uh, she would not do that. She's very shy. I have to give her like a month's notice. And 15 more minutes, Jimmy. 15 more minutes. 15 more? It's 9.30. till 9.30. All right, fine. Yes! Sorry, fine. cousin. <laughs> yeah, you have to apologize Sorry, and make cousin. do. Sorry, um, Alan, what is the number one priority before the end of the year? Ooh. 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 It's going to take me 15 minutes to figure that out. Number one priority for the end of the year. <laughs> Well, I mean, if we're not counting Augustus, um, because definitely Augustus, because that's the thing I want to. Um, um, oh, very cool. Very cool. I've heard that book is good. Richard Swan really likes it. Um, Justice I, King's author. Um, it is a point of contention in my discord. Some people love it. Some people think it's super mid. Oh, I haven't God. seen anyone hate it, though. I don't think I've just seen people kind of like bounce off of it. And then people are like, no, I'm going to love it. Because of the religious stuff, I think I'll, I'll be a big fan of that. Angels, I, demons, and stuff—I get into that. I I really like books that explore religions. The 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 evil the evil church is one of my favorite kinds of villains. But same. I think the, the, problem, <laughs> the problem is, I think people have gotten lazy with it. The same yes. thing with the the same thing with um the the nobles, you know, hating the yeah. commoners. Yeah. I think it's become too easy to just be like, oh, look at the evil church. One of my favorite freaking villains is from R.A. Salvatore's Demon War saga which uh aaron uh evans who i talked to yesterday said that he said salvatore says it's the best stuff he's written um like he he thinks it's the best stuff and i i agree it's my favorite stuff um because there is a a monk in it who is like he is awful but i still remember him i read these like end of high school early college and i still think about this villain because he is just he's good he's i mean he's a good villain he's not just like evil like he knows exactly how to exploit the the the, the resources and the power that the, the the church of the world has is so is so good i just think it's a little lazy a lot of times now to yeah, where yeah I, I would agree with that yeah um you know and i'm all down i'm down for the critique of religion um i think brian lee durfee does a fantastic job uh, in his, I have series. heard that. I have heard it's that. a little on the nose, but he's coming as someone who was uh, an ex Mormon, and the way he kind of weaves it in there, like it's very much a almost a religious fantasy in some mm -hmm. ways because the entire conflict is based around five war angels, right? Yeah, it, I mean it. It's pretty good, man. Uh, the third one comes out next month, and I feel like I need to either get a wrap, like I need some uh, like re reviews of it or something to get my brain back into that mode because I forget so much of book two, but I really want to read The Lonesome Crown. It was supposed to be a five book series, and it got turned into a three book series. So. Oh, really? Yeah, they wanted it. I, I, I might be getting that wrong, but I'm pretty sure everyone's told me that it was supposed to be five books and they wanted a trilogy instead. So, so that's why they're like yay big, but they're super easy to read. Brian Lee Durfee can write. Interessante. Like, yeah, a lot of Tad Williams. I have been told that um, I would enjoy the uh, religious conflict in that as well because I love I love reading about that stuff. Um, uh, Clara Quintet, another R.A. Salvatore book. The main characters are priests, and you know there's a corruption arc for one of them too. I, I love studying that stuff, and that doesn't you know that doesn't make me feel any kind of way like i i hope my religion isn't tied to people writing fiction it's just, so my problem is the same thing my problem with the parker books that i'm talking about is the exact same thing with uh oh dark look at dark right here look how dark yeah. this is like i i can see parker dragging his little soapbox out mounting it gathering his papers he's dressed like a victorian like uh you know critic uh in in this 
mind palace. And, you know, he sits there and it's like Farmer Refuted. Oh, you haven't seen Hamilton. Anybody seen Hamilton? It's like Farmer Refuted where the guy is sitting there like, these are the things that I hate. And it, it just feels like it. Like I'm like, Parker, like your hand is here. It's done. I think it's done better in the earlier novellas that deal with it. It's these most recent ones I've been reading. I'm like, why are you? You think he's getting more angry? And, you know I mean? and if that is, if that's his beef, I can understand why, if you look at the world right now, I can understand why you'd get angrier, like why yeah. you'd be angrier now than you were 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, definitely. And so I do get it, but uh, like, it just, it feels it's, it's, it's just less like in the, in the earlier ones, in my opinion, of course. But. Now here's a question. If it was something that was heavy handed that you enjoy, like you know I don't I mean? mind, I don't mind heavy handed stuff, but like, there's heavy handed, heavy handed is like on the nose stuff, heavy handed. And mm -hmm. then there's, and then there's screaming at me. Like, so yeah. like, I like the, ex I like the exploration of, um, you know, like the, the savages are people too. Like we're the colonizers. Like we didn't, we didn't really understand the savages right. also have families and stuff like that. But then there's being really heavy handed about it in, in a book that I read recently where they're just like, <sighs> their minds blown. And they literally say like, like the, narr the, the narrative literally says, oh, they had families too. They were, and I'm just like, like, I know, like that is so, that's just, that's just you, like, you're beating me with a stick. Dude, like, you know who does this the best? Who? Erickson. Erickson does that. Yeah. Erickson does his, that. his yeah, colonialism yeah. and, and everything. I mean, fantastic. Oh really yeah. I agree. Fantastic. I agree. I agree. Like the spider agree. Island where in their one prologue where they basically say that they used to like whip dogs and all this awful stuff. And they're like, we can't do anything we used to do now that we're here. And it's like, well, I don't really like colonialism, but I don't know if I like them whipping dogs either. Like, where's yeah. my line? And Erickson asked those questions in, in a pretty profound way, you know, being in the, yeah. in the empire or I'm sorry, the Marines headspace. For sure. Um, that's probably my favorite part of Malazan. Totally. Is, I love is, I love I love that prologue with Hellion being terrified so of the spider. Hellion's the freaking Spider Island. So good, dude. It is it is quite good. It is quite good. Um, so I didn't I never answered your question, Jimmy. Um, the thing I have to, oh oh I have something I have I have a list. Hold on, I have a list. Let me look at those. Um, so the thing I have to get to the most before the end of the year is if it's not Augustus, it's got to be a. Finish, finishing the Ravens Mark series, Blackwing, reading the next okay. few books. That is, I will, I am going to finish that before the end of the year because they're, they're short. Like they're both sub 400 pages. Like there's no reason uh, I, I haven't finished them. Yes, Anita, I'm going to read, I'm going to read Scare Path for the end of the year also. Like I'm definitely going to continue on apt. Um, the problem is, is I have problems starting things. And since I ended really kind of on the A and Vark one, once I start the Scarab Path, I'm going to have a really difficult time not continuing. So you're fine. I just need to like get the push to read book five um, and then I'll be okay. So, so here's a question. Here's yeah. a question. What are the chances you read the blade itself this year? Um, they're non-zero. It's a non-zero chance. Okay. Um, I'll take that. They're not great. Maybe 40%. <laughs> 40% chance. So they're better than it's better than better than nothing. Um, because I'm looking at the things that I'm looking at the things that I'm prioritizing there. And I will let you know, there are too many books that start with the letter S. Too yeah. many. Sailing. Five, one, Let's two, see. hold on. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I have 14 books on this list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't have a ton of S's back here, bro. I don't eight, know. Eight of the 14 on my list start with letter S. I don't know. I think you're just reading a lot of S books. Because I ain't got much back here. That's That's got to say something. About I got a lot of Stephen King. I got like 40 of his books. but Yeah, but not the author. Like the titles. Yeah, I don't got any S titles back here, bro. All right. Well, the Stand, I guess. Does that yeah, count? that counts. Um, here, are my, here are mine. These are the ones that I need like to finish or their patron reads or... Um, so I've got shards of honor, which is, that's my, that's my longest patron read that I need to read. That's, um, the Vorkosigan saga. Um, it's, it's greater than 2% Tiago. Oh, oh, here's the problem. Tiago, Tiago's, Tiago's, Tiago's yakioing that Umbra right now when he's the one that's going to have a freaking book come out in November that I'm going to have to read. Um, oh, thank you so much, Wendy. Yeah. Wendy said, Alan, I loved your stone review. I'll be starting that hopefully next week. Yes. It's good. I, 
That's awesome. It's good. So I got Shards of Honor. That's that's the first uh, Borkosian book. Yeah, Dude, but Mask of Bajold. I want to um, read it so bad. It's my, it is my oldest patron. Like, that's the one. That's my new Tigana. Um, then I have Scarapath. That's book five of Apt that Anitha is, you know, lathering about. Like, she's foaming at the mouth about it if I don't read it. Um, Shadows of Self or Shadows of Mid, which, you know, we're going to read together. Um, and then The Silver Spike, which is book four of Black Company, which I'm now actually waiting for you to catch up in Black Company, and then we'll read those together. Wait, what book are you on? I'm a book. I'm in my reread. I'm a book four. Let me see. Something. I have the omnibus. That's book one. I have, through the, three. Tr I have the first three. Yeah, that's one through three. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> three complete novels. One price. Pretty sick cover, actually. For sure. All right, when how, how long this, is when you're done one? with that? I'll pick it up. How long um, is book one? It 300 pages. Mm. That's it's not even one. that. It's 212. Well, that's because you have a I. Let me show you my black company. Yeah, let me see it. This is the one I had in high school. Like, I still have it. First of all, look at them yellow pages. Hold on. Oh, look. I love it. Yellow pages. And then mine is, you know, I got a little MMPB. Yeah, th I mean, this is a pretty, like, it's not small text, but it's not big text. And it's a pretty tall page. Like, the margins aren't very big. So I'd say it's probably more like a 300 page. Well, this one is three three sixteen three sixteen. Dude, you know what you should read that what? no one else besides like Raf has read is uh the Chronicles of Amber, the ten book series. But all the books are Zel like a hundred. Is that Zelazny? Zelazny, and they're all like a hundred and twenty pages long. Oh, that pleases me greatly. And I've only read two of them. Like you could rifle through those. Um, they're pretty good too. Well, when, if, like if you read Black Company and you like it, and we'll continue, we'll read. We'll, we can read together after you finish book three. Dude, um, then dude. I've got Shadow of the Torturer. So that's my second uh -huh. oldest um, one that I have to read. And that's short, but that's dense. So, um, And then I've got The Blade of Self. That's my most recent patron thing that I'm behind on. Augustus, which is getting read next. Um, Summer Night, which I put on here uh, so that Colton can hear me talk about it and not read it. Um, Raven Cry, which is book two of the Black Wing ones. Savages, I'm definitely going to read this for the end of the year. This is the other standalone, the final standalone of a novel, a full-length novel. He has five standalone full-length novels, Parker does. Um, the Wolf, but I'll be doing that on audio, and I've read it already, so I can tear through that. Six of Crows, maybe, because I've started it, <laughs> and, it's not, and it's actually better than it has any right to be, which makes me mad. Um, Game of Kings, which is my most, most recent patron thing, that is Dorothy Dunnett, historical fiction filled with historical references. I even bought a companion oh, for it so I could understand the references. I actually saw this and thought it looked really, really good. But when you first said it, I thought it was like some fantasy book that came out in like 2012. Yeah, I know. It sounds like that, right? This yeah. is Klaus's favorite series of all time. So Klaus was the patron that I got. What does I he know? This, I mean, Klaus has read... Klaus has read and loved, but also trashed many of my favorites. So I'm actually happy that I can read something that Klaus really likes. Um, and then finally, Jade War. Oh my. Is on that list. Oh so my. I'm not going to get to 14 books before the end of the year, but these are all on here. Um, so, dude, I would read Six of Crows for the sole fact that I like Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I thought Ninth House was really good. I have it's not read it. Um, I. Good. It's uh you would not like it. I don't think I would. Like Six of Crows is the first I've heard the first three chapters. It's uh like it was shockingly readable. Um and so, you know, it is it is not. I would definitely read Six of Crows. Um I'll honestly, I'm gonna read Sarah J. Mass. You definitely I, I am. would love to see your opinion. I'm going to do it. Dude, my, are, my wife loves them. Why wouldn't I? They are really readable. Like, she's not a bad writer. Like, she's not a bad, like, writer. Like, it's it's not hard to read. I just think they're dumb. Like, and I mean, I'm not going in expecting it to blow my mind, but my wife is reading Realm of the Elderlings. She's in Mad Ship, almost done with it. And I feel like fair. if she's going to read 16 books of Hob, I feel like I can at least read some, like, six Sarah J. Mass books. It is so. all, It is only fair, sir, indeed. Yeah. And plus we'll have something to talk about. It'd be fun. 
Omar says, very interested in Dorothy Dunnett, uh, but it's going to be a while till I get to her. And the series seems really dense and esoteric with a lot of Latin references and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, and, like, so and French poetry and stuff. That I literally bought a companion to Game of, Game of, uh, Game of Kings that lists, like, it tells you what the reference is from and, and what it's referencing, like, at, in the order of it happening. Because I'm like, that'll bother me. And I'm just going to spend a bunch of time Googling. So I might as well just get a book that I can just look it up in. <laughs> Jake Bishop says Alan will read Jay War when the sun rises in the west and rests in the east. <laughs> I will I will read Jade War when Kyle changes his rating of Fall of Babel to a from two a star. one star. Let me just raise it to two star. Raise it to two star. That's when I'll read Jade War and not until. <laughs> I uh I keep forgetting about Jade City. I gotta read that next year. Like I I've now pledged so many things to next year that I gotta actually sit down and figure out what i'm gonna read i gotta do my top eight reads for 2023 one yeah of my videos to I, make. yeah i have to i have to plan that out also and i have to make like i really enjoyed making the top 10 videos but i you know hit my wall and i only made like two of them this mm -hmm. past year and i was sad i didn't get to make the the 2021 version of all the ones i did for 2020 so i'm hoping i'll be able to do that this year because i like i like the top 10 ones and i also like being like these are the top series i want to read next year and i'm going to check to see how i did this year the answer is terribly the only one i didn't do was empire trilogy since i started wars of light and shadow why are, you, I was like, me? Why are you doing that hey i'm just saying if i make a list i had to stick to it i'm like really hardcore about it i fixate on things it's a problem honestly you know what uh joseph asks a question so jimmy allen have you ever read the forever war by joe uh Hadelman, I have not, but it's on my TBR. <laughs> same, um, same. Yeah. Well, Alan, you got the extra fifteen out of me. I so. did get the extra fifteen, Jimmy. You're a gentleman and a scholar. And there's few of us left. I, I know. I think it's just us two. <laughs> but then he got twenty k, and we can invite AP in. I mean, he's cool. He showed up after after the. Uh, That's true. The That's duo. True. That's because went. AP doesn't want he doesn't want to be corrupted by right. how mean Philip and Joanna are. That's right. No. That's right. Good for you, AP. Trying to keep it, trying to keep it, keep it honest and stuff. So, <laughs> guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, these are always insane, uh, and they're always so much fun. Um, I hope you had a good time, and we will be back. I'll be back in two weeks with another chatting with nuts, and I'm sure Al will be back within a month. You know, this it's it's been almost three months since you've been on. No, it hasn't. Yeah, it's been two and a half months since you've been on. Really? What yeah. To me recently. What did I, I do? I don't know. When's the last one I was on? Oh, hey, man. Amanda's been here the whole time. She's the oh. one who recommended uh, the Michelle Paver book. No really use. Um, yeah, so Alan will be back on. Maybe, uh, you know, it's October. Maybe the, the last one of 2022 we'll do something. Oh, dude. Fun? Dude, that'd be epic. Yeah, we'll do that something fun. Epic. We're going to do a New Year's Eve something. I don't know. Dude. Uh, well, I, if, I, it's I, provided I, we don't have plans with our with our wives. Well, our wives can just join us. Dude. That could be fun. Christina. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, everyone, thank you so much. Make sure to hit like on this so people can find it after the fact. Go subscribe to Alan's channel. You probably already are. And uh, make sure to unsubscribe from Philip Chase if you can. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't he do that. It. Do not do that. Uh, <laughs> there's a Patreon in the description. It's optional, but always appreciate it. I love you guys so much. Thank you very, very much. And Alan, thanks for three hours of your time, brother. Boy. <laughs> I can't do the thing where you can like do your finger like it's like the uh, skull snap thing yeah, yeah i can't do it there's a there's a tribe in caesar a tribe of barbarians called the boy tribe and so every time i talk about them i try to go the boy tribe and i can't do it <laughs> you gotta have the side where uh upside down visor to the side you know what i'm saying those. why do people wear hats on the top of their head why don't people pull hats down on their head like all of the baseball players at freaking at my school they like they put a hat they wear a hat like like where's my hat no, it's not going to work without the visual. Oh, well, I don't have it. Anyway, why do they just put the hat? Why do they wear the hat like this? Why Why is this how they wear the hat? Because they it's too much effort. They want to look cool. Too cool for school. But it doesn't look cool. It looks ridiculous. It I, like, I like to do this because now I'm Steve Buscemi in that like gif. How do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> Hello, fellow kids. That's how I imagine you at school all the time, actually. <laughs> No, I'm very mean at school. They all think I'm. They all think I'm heartless and unkind, which you are. To be fair, I'm not. I am so nurturing to those kids. They just, <laughs> they just cry because I want them to work and learn something. What's wrong with those kids? I just, 
society. We live in a society. Be good, be safe, and remember to always keep turning the page. (laughs)